Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today, I have a very special read planned. It is Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. Now, you might be wondering why the book is so big, but the play is so small. Well, actually, this book is not only the text, but also multiple criticisms and analysis of the play. I've had the pleasure of reading the book a couple times, as well as the text and the play and everything. One of Arthur Miller's greatest, the tale of Biff Lohman and his journey, his greed, and his life. So without further ado, I'd like to start on page one. Mainly, act one and the stage directions, as well as all the characters, monologues, and everything else. From Act 1 to Act 3. A melody is heard, played upon a flute. It is small and fine, telling of grass and trees and the horizon. The curtain rises. Before us is the salesman's house. We are aware of a towering angular shapes behind it, surrounding it on all sides. Only the blue light of the sky falls upon the house in the fourth stage. The surrounding area shows an angry glow of orange. As more light appears, we see a solid vault of apartment houses around the small, fragile-seeming home. An air of the dream clings to the place, a dream rising out of reality. The kitchen at center seems actual enough, for there is a kitchen table with three chairs and a refrigerator. But no other fixtures are seen. At the back of the kitchen, there is a draped entrance, which leads to the living room. To the right of the kitchen, on a level raised two feet, is a bedroom furnished only with brass bedstead and a stray chair. On a shelf over the bed, a silver athletic trophy stands. A window opens onto the apartment house at the side. Behind the kitchen, on a level raised six and a half feet, is the boys' bedroom, at present barely visible. Two beds are dimly seen, and at the back of the room, a dormer window. This bedroom is above the unseen living room. At the left, a stairway curves up to it from the kitchen. The entire ceiling is wholly or, in some places, partially transparent. The roof line of the house is one-dimensional. Under and over it, we see the apartment buildings. Before the house lies an apron, curving beyond the four stage into the orchestra. This forward area serves as the backyard, as well as the local of all Willie imaginings and of his city scenes. Whenever the actions is in the present, the actors observe the imaginary wall lines, entering the house only through its door at the left. But in the scenes of past, these boundaries are broken, and characters entering or leave a room by stepping through a wall and onto the four stage. From the right, Willie Lohman, the salesman, enters, carrying two large sample cases. The flute plays on. He hears, but is not aware of it. He is past 60 years of age, dressed quietly. Even as he crosses the stage to the doorway of his house, his exhaustion is apparent. He unlocks the door, coming into the kitchen, and thankfully lets his burden down, feeling the soreness of his palms. A word sigh escapes his lips. It might be, oh boy, oh boy. He closes the door, then carries his cases out into the living room, though the draped kitchen doorway. Linda, his wife, has stirred in her bed at the right. She gets out and puts on a robe, listening. Most often jovial, she has developed an iron reparation of her exceptions to Willie's cruelties. Served her only as sharp... Reminders of the turbulent longings with him, longings which she shared but lacks the temperament to utter and follow to their end. Linda, hearing Willie outside the bathroom, calls with some trepidation. Willie! Willie. It's all right. I came back. Linda. Why? What happened? Did something happen, Willie? Willie. No, nothing happened. Linda. You didn't smash the car, did you? Willie, with casual irritation, 
I said nothing happened. Didn't you hear me? Linda. Don't you feel well? Willie. I'm tired to the death. The flute has faded away. He sits on the bed beside her, a little nun. I couldn't make it. I just couldn't make it, Linda. Linda, very carefully, delicately. Where were you all day? You look terrible. Willie. I got as far as a little above Yonkers. I stopped for a cup of coffee. Maybe it was the coffee. Linda. What? Willie, after a pause. I suddenly couldn't drive anymore. The car kept going off the shoulder, you know? Linda, helpfully. Oh, maybe it was the steering again. I don't think Angela knows the stewed bocker. Willie. No, it's me. It's me. Uh, suddenly I realize I'm going 60 miles an hour and I don't remember the last five minutes. I'm... I can't seem to... I can't keep my mind to it. Linda. Maybe it's your glasses. You never went for your new glasses. Willie. No, I see everything. I, I came back 10 miles an hour. It took me nearly four hours from Yonkers. Linda. Resigned. Well, you'll just have to take a rest, Willie. You just can't continue this way. Willie. I just got back from Florida. Linda. But you didn't rest your mind. Your mind is overactive, and the mind is what counts, dear. Willie. I'll start out in the morning. Maybe I'll feel better in the morning. She is taking off his shoes. These goddamn art supporters are killing me. Linda. Take an aspirin. Should I get you an aspirin? It'll soothe you. Willie, with wonder. I was driving along, you understand, and I, I was fine. I was even observing the scenery. You can imagine me looking at the scenery on the road every week of my life, but it's so beautiful up there, Linda. The trees are so thick, and the sun is warm. I open the windshield and just let the warm air bathe over me, and all of a sudden, I'm going off the road. I'm telling you, I absolutely forgot I was driving. If I'd gone the other way on the white line, I might have killed somebody. So I went on again, and five minutes later, I'm dreaming again, and I nearly... He presses two fingers against his eyes. I have such thoughts. I have such strange thoughts. Linda. Willie, dear, talk to them again. There's no reason why you can't work in New York. Willie. They don't need me in New York. I'm the New England man. I'm vital in New England. Linda. But you're 60 years old. They can't expect you to keep on traveling every week. Willie. I'll have to send a wire to Portland. I'm supposed to see Brown and Morrison tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to show the line. God damn it, I could sell them. He starts putting on his jacket. Linda taking the jacket from him. Why don't you go down to the place tomorrow and tell Howard you simply got to work in New York? You're too accommodating, dear. Willie. If old man Wagner was alive, I'd be in charge of New York now. That man was a prince. He was a masterful man. But that boy of his, that Howard, he don't appreciate when I went north the first time. The Wagner company didn't know where New England was. Linda. Why don't you tell those things to Howard, dear? Willie. Encouraged. I will. I definitely will. Is, is there any cheese? Linda, I'll make you a sandwich. No, go to sleep. I'll, I'll, I'll take some milk. I'll, I'll be up all right. Put the boys in? Linda, they're sleeping. Happy took Biff on a date tonight. Willie, that's so. Linda, it was nice to see them shaving together, one behind the other in the bathroom and going out together. You notice the whole house smells of shaving lotion. Willie, figure it out. Work a lifetime to pay off a house. You finally own it. And there's nobody to live in it. Linda. Well, dear, like is like a casting off. It's always that way. Willie. No, no, no. Some people. Some people accomplish something. Did Biff say anything after I went this morning? Linda. You shouldn't have criticized him, Willie. Especially after he just got off the train. You mustn't lose your temper with him. Willie. When the hell did I lose my temper? I simply asked him if he was making any money. Is that a criticism? Linda. But, dear, how could he make any money? Willie, worried and angered. There is an undercurrent in him. He became a moody man. Did he apologize when I left this morning? Linda, he was crestfallen, Willie. You know how he admires you. I think if he finds himself, then you'll both be happier and not fight anymore. Willie, how can he find himself on a farm? Is that a life, a farmhand? In the beginning when he was young, I thought, well, young man, it's good for him to tramp around, take a lot of different jobs. But it's more than 10 years now, and he has yet to make $35 a week. Linda. He's finding himself, Willie. Willie. Not finding yourself at the age of 34 is a disgrace. Linda. Shh. Willie. 
The trouble is he's lazy, god damn it. Linda, Willie, please. Willie, Biff is a lazy bum. Linda, they're sleeping. Get something to eat. Go on down. Willie, why did he come home? I would like to know what brought him home. Linda, I don't know. I think he's still lost, Willie. I think he's very lost. Willie, Biff Loman is lost. In the greatest country of the world, a young man with such personal attractiveness gets lost. And such a hard worker. There's one thing about Biff. He's not lazy. Linda, never. Willie, with pity and resolve. I'll see him in the morning. I'll have a nice talk with him and I'll get him a job selling. He could be big no time. <laughs> My God. Remember how they used to follow him around in high school? When he smiled at one of them, their faces lit up. When he walked down the street, he loses himself in reminiscence. <laughs> Linda, trying to bring him out of it. Willie, dear. I, I got a new kind of American type cheese today. It's whipped. Willie, why don't you get the American one? I like Swiss. Linda, I just thought you liked change. I don't want change. I want Swiss cheese. Why am I always being contradicted? Linda with a covering laugh. <laughs> I thought it would be a surprise. Willie, why don't you open a window in here? For God's sakes. Linda, with infinite patience, they're all open, dear. Willie, the way they box us in here, bricks and windows, windows and bricks. Linda, we should have bought the land next door. Willie, the street is lined with cars. There's not a breath of fresh air in the neighborhood. The grass don't grow anymore. You can't raise a carrot in the backyard. They should have had a law against apartment houses. Remember those two beautiful elm trees out there when, when I and Biff hung the swing between them? Linda, yeah, like a million miles from the city. Willie, they should have arrested the builder for cutting those down. They massacred the neighborhood. More and more I think of those days, Linda. The time of year it was, and lilac and wisteria. And then the peonies would come out, and the daffodils. What a fragrance in this room. Linda, well, after all, people had to move somewhere. Willie, no, there's more people now. Linda, I, I don't think there's more people, I think, Willie. There's more people! That's what's ruining this country. Population is getting out of control. The competition maddening. Smell the stink from their apartment house and another one on the side. How can they whip cheese? On Willie's last line, Biff and Happy raise themselves up in their beds listening. Willie, turning to Linda, guiltily. You're not worried about me, are you, sweetheart? Biff, what's the matter? Happy, listen. Linda, you got too much on the ball to worry about. Willie, you're my foundation and my support, Linda. Linda, just try to relax, dear. You make mountains out of molehills. Willie, I won't fight with him anymore. If he wants to go back to Texas, let him go. Linda, he'll find his way. Willie, sure. Certain men just don't get started till later in life, like Thomas Edison or I think uh, B.F. Goodrich. One of them was deaf. He starts with the bedroom doorway. I'll put my money on Biff. Linda. And Willie, if it's warm Sunday, we'll take a drive in the country and we'll open the windshield up and get lunch. Willie. No, the windshields don't open on the new cars. But you opened it today, says Linda. Willie. Me? I didn't. He stops. Now, isn't that peculiar? Isn't that remarkable? He takes a breath off in amazement and fright, and the flute is heard distantly. Linda, what, darling? Willie, that is the most remarkable thing. Linda, what, dear? Willie, well, I was thinking of the Chevy. Slight pause. 1928, when I had that red Chevy. That funny? I could have sworn I was driving that Chevy today. Linda, well, that's uh, nothing. Something must have just reminded you. Willie, really remarkable. It's, remember those days? The way Piff used to Simonize that car? The dealer refused to believe that there was 80,000 miles on it. He shakes his head. <laughs> to Linda. Close your eyes, I'll be right up. He walks out of the bedroom. Happy. To Biff. Jesus, maybe he smashed up on the car again. Linda, calling after Willie. Be careful on the stairs, dear. The cheese is on the middle shelf. She turns, goes over to the bed, takes his jacket, and goes out of the bedroom. 
Light has risen on the boy's bedroom. Unseen, Willie is heard talking to himself. <laughs> 80,000 miles. And a little laugh. Biff gets out to bed, comes down stage a bit, and stands attentively. Biff is two years older than his brother. Happy, well built, but in these days, bears a warm air and seems less self-acceptable man than Happy. Happy is tall, powerfully made. Sexuality is like a visible color on him, or a scent that many women have discovered. He, like his brother, is lost, but in a different way, for he has never allowed himself to turn his face toward defeat, and thus more confused and hard skinned, although seemingly more content. Happy, getting out of bed. He's going to get his license taken away if he keeps that up. I'm getting nervous about him, you know, Biff? Biff. His eyes are going. Happy. No, I I've driven with him. He seems alright. He just doesn't keep his mind on it. I drove to the city with him last week. He stops at a green light, and then it turns red, and he goes. <laughs> Biff. Maybe he's colorblind. Happy. Pop? He got the finest eyes for color in the business. You know that. Biff, sitting down on his bed. I'm going to sleep. Happy. You're not so sour on Dad, are you, Biff? Biff. Uh, he's all right, I guess. Willie, underneath them in the living room. Yes, sir. 80,000 miles. 82,000. Biff. You smoking? Happy. Holding out a pack of cigarettes. Want one? Biff, taking his cigarette. I can never sleep when I smell it. Willie, what a simonizing job, huh? Happy with deep sentiment. <laughs> Funny, Biff, you know, us sleeping in here again, the old beds. He passes his bed uh, affectionately. All the talk that we went across in these two beds, huh? Our whole lives. Biff, yeah, a lot of dreams and plans. Happy with a deep masculine laugh. <laughs> About 500 women would like to know what was said in this room. They share a soft laugh. Biff, remember that big Betsy or something? What the hell was her name? Over on Bushwick Avenue. Happy uh, combing his hair. Oh, with the collie dog. That's the one. I got you in there, remember? Happy. Yeah, that was my first time, I think. Boy, that was a pig. <laughs> they laugh almost crudely. You taught me everything I know about women. Don't forget that. Biff, I bet you forgot how bashful you used to be, especially with girls. Biff, oh, go on. Happy. I just control it, that's all. I think I guess I got less bashful, and you got more on. What happened, Biff? Where's the old humor, the old confidence? He shakes Biff's knee. Biff gets up and moves relentlessly around the room. What's the matter? Biff, why does Dad mock me all the time? Happy, he's not mocking you, he, Biff. I, I, everything I say, there's a twist of mocker in his face. I can't get near him. Happy, he just wants you to make good, that's all. I, I wanted to talk to you about Dad for a long time, Biff. Something's happened to him. He, he talks to himself. Biff, I noticed that this morning, but he's always mumbled, happy, but not so noticeable. It got so embarrassing, I sent him to Florida, and you know something? Most of the time, he's talking to you. W what's he say about me? Happy. I, I can't make it out. Biff, what's he say about me? Happy. I think the fact that you're not settled, the fact that you're still kind of hung up in the air. Biff, there's one or two things depressing him, happy. Happy. What do you mean? Biff, never mind. Just don't lay it all to me. Happy. But I think if you just got started here, I mean, is there any future for you out there? Biff. I'll tell you, Hap. I don't know what the future is. I don't know what I'm supposed to want. Happy. Well, what do you mean? Biff. Well, I spent six or seven years after high school trying to work myself up. Shipping clerk, salesman, business of one kind or another. And it's a measly manner of existence to get on that subway on the hot mornings in the summer to devote your whole life to keeping stock or making phone calls or selling or buying to suffer 50 or the rest of the year for sake of a two-week vacation. When all you really desire is to be outdoors with your shirt off and you always have to get ahead of the next fellow. And still, uh, that's how you build a future. Happy. Well, you really enjoy it on a farm? Are you content out there? Biff, with rising agitation. Hap, I've had 20 or 30 different kinds of jobs since I left home before the war, and it always turns out the same. I just realized it lately. In Nebraska, when I heard the cattle, and Dakotas, and Arizona, and now in Texas, that's why I came home now, I guess, because I realize it. The farm I work on, it's spring there now, see? And they've got about 15 new colts. There's nothing more inspiring or beautiful than the sights of a mare. Oh, and new colts. And it's cool out there, too. You see, Texas is cool now, and it's spring. 
And whenever spring comes to where I am, I suddenly get the feeling, my God, I'm not getting anywhere. What the hell am I doing? I'm playing around with these horses, $28 a week, 34 years old. I ought to be making my future. That's why when I'm coming home. And now I get here and I don't know what to do with myself. I've always made a point of not wasting my life. And every time I come back here, I know that all I've done is to waste my life. Happy. You're a poet. <laughs> you know that, Biff? You're an idealist, Biff. No, I, I'm mixed up very bad. I, I ought to get married. I ought to get stuck into something. Maybe that's my trouble. I'm like a boy. I'm not married. I'm not in business. I'm just like a boy. Are you content, Hap? You're a success, aren't you? Aren't you content? Happy. Hell no. Biff, why? You're making money, aren't you? Happy. Moving about with energy. Expressiveness. All I can do now is wait out the merchandise manager to die. And suppose I get to be merchandise manager. He's a good friend of mine. And he just built a terrific estate on Long Island. And he's lived there for about two months and sold it. And now he's building another one. He can't enjoy it once it's finished. And I know that's just what I would do. I don't know what the hell I'm working for. Sometimes I sit in my apartment all alone. And I think of the rent I'm paying. And it's crazy. But then it's what I've always wanted. I, you know, my own apartment, a car, <laughs> plenty of women. And still, God damn it, I'm, I'm lonely. Biff with enthusiasm. Listen, why don't you come out west with me? Happy. You and I, huh? Biff, sure. Maybe we could buy a ranch, raise cattle, use our muscles. Men built like what we are shouldn't be working out in the open. Bid. Avidly. The Loman brothers, huh? Biff with vast deflection. Sure. We'd be known all over the counties. Happy. Enthralled. That's what I dream about, Biff. Sometimes I just want to rip my clothes off in the middle of a store and outbox that goddamn merchandise manager. I mean, I can outbox, outrun, outlift anybody in that store, and I can take orders from those common, petty sons of bitches till I can't stand them there no more. Biff, I'm telling you, kid, if you were with me, I'd be happy out there. Happy, enthused. See, Biff, everybody around me is so false, and I'm constantly lowering my ideals. Biff, baby, together we'd stand up for one another. We'd have something to trust. Happy, if I were around you, happy. The, the, the trouble is that we weren't brought up to grub for money. I, I don't know how to do it. Happy, <laughs> neither can I. Biff, then let's go. Happy, the only thing is, is, what can you make out there? Biff, but look at your friend. Builds an estate and then hasn't had the peace of mind to live in it. Happy, yeah, but when he walks into the store... The waves part in front of him. That's $52,000 a year coming from the revolving door, and I got more in my pinky finger than he's got in his head. Biff, yeah, but you just said, happy. I gotta show some of those pompous, self-important executives out there, and Hap Loman can make it the grade. I want to walk in the store the way he walks in. Then I go with you, Biff, and we'll be together yet, I swear. But take those two we had tonight. <laughs> they weren't gorgeous. Yeah, the most gorgeous I've had in years. Happy. I get that any time I want, Biff. When I feel disgusted. The only trouble is it gets like bowling or something. I just keep knocking them over and then it doesn't mean anything. You still run around a lot. Buff. Nah, I like to find a girl. Steady. Someone with substance. Happy. That's what I long for. Biff, go on. You'd never come home. Happy. I would. Somebody with character. With resistance. Like mom, you know, you're gonna call me a bastard when I tell you this. That girl Charlotte I was on tonight is engaged to be married in five weeks. He tries on his new hat. Biff, no kidding. Happy, sure. The guy's in line for the vice presidency of the store. I don't know what gets into me. Maybe I just have an overdeveloped sense of competition or something, but I went and ruined her. And furthermore, I can't get rid of her and... He's the third executive I've done that to. Isn't that a crummy characteristic? And to top it all, I go to all their weddings. Indignantly, laughing. I, like, I'm not supposed to take bribes. Manufacturers offer me $100 bills now and then to, you know, throw an order their way. But how honest I am, it's like this girl. See, I hate myself for it because I know I don't want the girl. And still, I take it and I love it. Biff, let's go to sleep. Happy. I guess we didn't settle anything, huh? Biff, I just got one idea I think I'm going to try. Happy, what's that? Biff, remember Bill Oliver? Happy, sure. Oliver is uh, very big now. You want to work for him again. Biff, no, when I quit, he said something to me. He put his arm on my shoulder and said, Biff, if you ever need anything, come to me. 
happy. I remember that. That sounds good. But if I think I'll go see him again. If I can get 10000 or even seven or $8,000, I could buy a beautiful ranch. Happy. I bet he'd back you, because he thought highly of you. Biff, I mean, they all do. You're well-liked, Biff. That's why I say to come back here, and when we have the apartment, and I'm telling you, Biff, any babe you want. Biff, no, with the ranch, I could do all the work I like and still be something. I just wonder, though, if Oliver still thinks I stole that carton of basketballs. Happy. Oh, he probably forgot that long ago. It's been almost 10 years. You're too sensitive anyway. He didn't really fire you. Biff, well, I think he was going to. I think that's why I quit. I I was never sure if whether he, th he knew or not. I knew he thought the world of me, though. I was the only one he'd let lock up the place. Willie, below. You gonna watch the engine, Biff? Happy. Shh. Biff looks at Happy, who's gazing down, listening. Willie is mumbling in the parlor. Happy. You hear that? They listen. Willie laughs warmly. Biff, growing angry. Doesn't even know Mom can hear that? Willie. Don't get your sweater dirty, Biff. A look of pain crosses Biff's face. Happy. Isn't that terrible? Don't leave him again, will you? You'll find a job here. You'll stick around. I don't know what to do about him. It's getting embarrassing. Willie. What a simonizing job. Biff. Mom's hearing that. Willie. No kidding, Biff. You got a date? Wonderful. Happy. Go to sleep, but talk to him in the morning, will you? Biff, reluctantly getting into the bed. With her in the house, brother. Happy getting into bed. I wish you have a good talk with him. The light on the room begins to fade. Biff to himself in the bed. That's stupid. Selfish. Happy. Shh. Sleep. Biff. Their light is out. Well before they have finished speaking, Willie's form is dimly seen in the darkened kitchen. He opens the refrigerator, searches in there, and takes out a bottle of milk. The apartment houses are fading out, and the entire house and surrounding becomes covered with leaves. Music insinuates itself as the leaves appear. Willie, just want to be careful with those girls, Biff, that's all. Don't make any promises, no promises of any kind, because a girl, you know, they always believe what you tell them, and you're very young, Biff, you're too young to be taken that seriously to girls. Light rises in the kitchen, Willie talking, shuts the refrigerator, and comes down stage to the kitchen table. He pours milk into the glass. He is totally immersed in himself, smiling faintly. Willie, too young entirely, Biff. You want to watch your schooling first, and when you're all set, there'll be plenty of girls for a boy like you. He smiles broadly at the kitchen chair. That's so. The girls pay for you. <laughs> you laughed, boy, you must really be making a hit. Willie is gradually addressing physically a point off stage speaking through the wall of the kitchen and his voice has been rising in volume to that of a normal conversation willie i've been wondering why you polished that car so careful ha don't leave the hubcaps boys get the camera to the hubcaps happy using newspaper off the windows it's the easiest thing show him how to do it biff you see happy pad it up use it like a pad that's it good work you're doing all right hap he pauses in the nods in appropriation to a few seconds then looks upward biff First thing we gotta do is get that timing clip and that big branch over the house. Afraid it's gonna fall in a storm and hit the roof. I'll tell you what, we'll get a rope and sling her around and then we'll climb up there with a couple of saws and take her down. As Soon as you finish the car, boys, I wanna see you. I got a surprise for you, boys. Biff, off stage. What do you got, Dad? No, 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 Willie, no, you finished last. Never leave a job till you finish. Remember that looking towards the big trees, Biff, up in Albany? I saw a beautiful hammock. I think I'll buy it next trip, and we'll hang it right between those two elms. Wouldn't that be something, just swinging there under those branches? Boy, that would be... Young Biff and young Happy appear from the direction Willie was addressing. Happy carries rags and a pail of water. Biff is wearing a sweater and a block S. Carries a football. Biff, pointing in the direction of the car off stage. How's that, Pop? Professional? Willie. Terrific. Terrific job, boys. Good work, Biff. Happy. Where's the surprise, Pop? Willie. It's in the back seat of the car. Happy boy, he runs off. Biff, what is it, Dad? Tell me, what'd you buy? Willie, laughing, cuffs him. Never mind, something I want you to have. Biff turns and starts off. What is it, Hap? Hap, off stage. It's a punching bag. Biff, oh, Pop. Willie, it's got Gene Tunney's signature on it. Happy runs on stage with a punching bag. Gee, how'd you know we wanted a punching bag? Well, it's the thing for the timing. Happy lies down on his back and pedals with his feet. I'm losing weight, you notice, Pop? Willie to Happy. Jumping rope is good, too. Biff, did you see the new football I got? Willie, examining the ball. Where'd you get a new ball? Biff, the coach told me to practice my passing. Willie, 
Is that so? And he gave you the ball, huh? Biff. Well, I borrowed it from the locker room. He laughs confidently. Willie laughing at him to the left. I, I want you to return that. Happy, I told you you wouldn't like it. Biff, angrily. Well, I'm bringing it back. Willie, stopping the incipient argument to Happy. Sure, he's got to practice the regulation ball, doesn't he? To Biff, Coach will probably congratulate you on that initiative. Oh, he keeps congratulating my initiative all the time, Pop. Willie, that's because he likes you. If someone else took that ball, well, that would be an uproar. So what's the report, boys? What's the report? Biff, you, where'd you go this time, Dad? Gee, we were lonesome for you. Willie, please, puts an arm around each boy and then come down to the apron. A lonesome, huh? Biff, missed you every time. Willie, don't say. T tell you a secret, boys. Don't breathe it to a soul. Someday, I'll have my own business, and I'll never have to leave home anymore. Happy, like Uncle Charlie, huh? Willie, bigger than Uncle Charlie, because Charlie is not liked. He's liked, but he's not well-liked. Biff, uh, where'd you go this time, Dad? Willie, well, I got on the road, and I went north to Providence. I met the mayor. Biff, the mayor of Providence? Willie, he was sitting in the hotel lobby. Biff, what'd he say? Willie, he said morning, and I said, you got a fine city here, Mayor. And then he had his coffee with me, and then I went to Waterbury. Waterbury's a fine city, big clock city, and the famous Waterbury clock sold a nice bill there. And then Boston. Boston is the cradle of the revolution, a fine city and a couple of other towns in Mass, and on to Portland and Bangor and straight home. Biff, gee, I'd love to go with you sometimes, Dad. Willie, as uh, soon as summer comes, happy. Promise? Willie, you and Hap and I, I'll, and I'll show you all the towns. America's full of beautiful towns and fine, upstanding people. And they know me, boys. They know me up and down New England, the finest people. And when I bring you fellows up, there'll be an open sesame for all of us. Because one thing, boys, I have friends. I can park my car in the streets of in town of any New England. And the cops protect it like their own. This summer, huh? Biff and Happy together. Yeah, you bet. Willie, we'll take our bathing suits. Happy. We'll carry your bags, Pop. Willie, oh, won't that be something? Be coming into the Boston stores and you boys carrying my bags. What a sensation. Biff is prancing around, practicing passing the ball. Willie, you nervous, Biff? About the game? Biff, not if you're going to be there. Willie, well, what do they say about you in school now that you made captain? Happy. Well, there's a crowd of girls behind him every time the class change. Biff, taking Willie's hand. This Saturday, Pop, this Saturday's just for you. I'm going to break through a touchdown. Happy, you're supposed to pass. Biff, I'm taking one play for Pop. You watch me, Pop. And then when I take off my helmet, that means I'm breaking out. Then you catch me crash through that line. Willie kisses Biff. Mwah. Oh, I'll wait till I tell this in Boston. Bernard enters in the kitchen. He's younger than Biff, Ernest and lawyer. A worried boy. Bernard, Biff, where are you? You're supposed to study with me today. Willie, hey, look, Bernard, what, what are you looking so anemic about, Bernard? Bernard, he's got to study, Uncle Willie. He's got regents next week. Happy, taunting and spinning Bernard around. Let's box, Bernard. Bernard, Biff, he gets away from Happy. L listen, Biff, I heard Mr. Birnbaum say that if you don't start studying math, he's going to flunk you, and you won't graduate. I heard him. Willie, you better study with him, Biff. Go ahead now. Bernard, I heard him. Biff, oh, Pop, didn't you see my sneakers? He holds up a foot for Willie to look at. Hey, that's a beautiful job of printing. Bernard, wiping his glasses. Well, he just invented the University of Virginia on his sneakers, and it doesn't mean they've got to graduate him, Uncle Willie. Willie, angrily, what are you talking about? With scholarships at three universities, they're going to flunk him? Bernard, but I heard Mr. Birnbaum say, Willie, don't be a pest, Bernard, to his boys. What an anemic... Bernard, okay, I'm waiting for you in my house, Biff. Bernard goes off. The Lomans left. <laughs> Willie, Bernard is not well-liked, is he? Biff, he is liked, but <laughs> not well-liked. Happy, that's right, Pop. Willie, that's just what I meant. Bernard can get the best marks in school, you understand, but when he gets out in the business world, you understand, uh, you're going to be out five times ahead of him. That's why I think, almighty God, you're built like a Donnie's. Because the man who makes appearance in this world, the man who creates personal interest is the man who gets ahead. Be liked and you will never want. You will take me, for instance. I never have to wait in line to see a buyer. Willie Loman is here. That's all they have to know. And I go right through. Biff, did you knock him dead, Pop? Willie, knocked him dead, cold in Providence. Slaughtered him in Boston. Happy. On his back, pedaling again. I'm losing weight. You notice, Pop? Linda enters as a wash of a ribbon in her hair, carrying a basket of washing. 
Linda with youthful energy. Hello, dear. Willie, sweetheart. Linda, how's the Chevy run? Willie, Chevrolet, Linda, is the greatest car ever built to the boys. Since when you let your mother carry the wash up the stairs? Biff, grab hold there, boy. Happy, where to, Mom? Linda, hang them up on the line, and you better go down to your friends, Biff. The cellar is full of boys. They don't know what to do with themselves. Biff, ah, oh, when Pop comes home, they can wait. Billy laughs appreciatively. You better go down and tell them what to do, Biff. Biff, I think I can, I can have them sweep out the furnace room. Willie, good work, Biff. Biff goes through the wall line of the kitchen doorway and calls down. Fellas, everybody sweep out the furnace room. I'll be right down. Voices, oh, all right, okay, Biff. Biff, George and Sam and Frank, come out back. We're hanging up the wash. Come on, Hap, on the double. He and Hap carry out the laundry basket. Linda, the way they obey him. Willie, well, that's the training. The training, I'm telling you. I was selling thousands and thousands, but I had to come home. Linda, oh, the whole block would be at that game. Did you sell anything? Willie, I did 500 gross in Providence and 700 gross in Boston. Linda, no, wait a minute. I got a pencil. She pulls a pencil and paper out of her apron pocket. That makes you commission 200, oh my God, $212. Willie, well, I didn't figure it yet, but how much did you do? Willie, well, I did about 180 gross in Providence. Well, no, it came roughly to 200 gross on the whole trip. Linda, without hesitation, 200 gross, that's... The trouble was that there was, of the stores, that were half closed for inventory in Boston, otherwise I would have broke records. Linda, well, it makes $70 and some pennies. That's very good. Willie, what do we owe? Well, on the first, there's $16 in the refrigerator. Willie, why 16 Linda, well, the fan belt broke, so it was a dollar eighty. Willie, but it's brand new. Linda, well, the man said that that's the way it is. They, you know, until they work themselves in, you know? They move through the wall line into the kitchen. Well, I hope we didn't get stuck on that machine. Linda, they got the biggest ads of them. Willie, I don't know, it's a fine machine. Well, what else? Well, Linda, there's a 96, 960 for the washing machine, and for the vacuum cleaner, there's three and a half due on the 15th. Then the roof, you got $21 remaining. Willie, it doesn't leak, does it? Linda, no, they did a wonderful job. Then you owe Frank for the carburetor. Willie, I'm not going to pay that, man. That goddamn Chevrolet, they ought to prohibit the manufacturer of that car. Linda, well, you owe him three and a half, and odds and ends, it comes around to $120 by the 15th. Willie, $120? My God, if business doesn't pick up, I don't know what I'm going to do. Linda, well, next week, he'll, he'll do better. Willie, oh, I'll knock him dead next week. I'll go to Hartford. I'm very well liked in Hartford, you know. The trouble is, Linda, people don't seem to take to me. They move on to the four stage. L Linda, oh, don't be foolish. Willie, I know it when I walk in. They seem to laugh at me. Linda, why? Why would they laugh at you? Don't talk like that, Willie. Willie moves to the edge of the stage. Linda goes into the kitchen and starts the darn stockings. Willie, I don't know what the reason for it, but they just seem to pass me by. I'm not noticed. Linda, you're doing wonderful, dear. You're making 70 to to $100 a week. Willie, I, it got to be at 10, 12 hours a day. Other men, I don't know. They, they do it easier. I, I don't know why I can't stop myself. If I talk too much, a man ought to come in with a few words. One thing about Charlie, he's a man of few words, and they respect him. Linda, you don't talk too much. You're just lively. Willie, smiling. Well, I figure, what the hell? Life is short. A couple of jokes. And stuff. I joke too much. The smile goes. Linda, why are you? Well, I'm fat. I'm very foolish to look at, Linda. I didn't tell you, but Christmas time, I happened to be calling on F.H. Stewart's and a salesman I know. He was going to go in and see the buyer. I heard him say something about a walrus, and I cracked him right across the face. I don't take that. I simply will not take that, but they do not laugh at me. And they do. I know that. Linda, darling. Willie, I, I gotta overcome it. I know... I gotta overcome it. I'm not dressing to advantage, maybe. Willie, darling, you're the handsomest man in the world. Willie, oh, no, Linda. Linda, to me you are, slight pause, the handsomest. From the darkness is heard the laughter of a woman. Willie doesn't turn to it, but it continues through the Linda's lines. Linda, and the boys, Willie. Few men are idolized by children the way you are. Music is heard behind the, as a scrim. To the left of the house, a woman, deemly lit, is dressing. Willie, with great feelings. You're the best there is, Linda. You're a pal, you know that. On the road, on the road, I want to grab some times and just kiss the life out of you. The laughter is loud now, and he moves into a brightening area in the screen where the woman has come from behind the scrim and is standing, putting on her hat. 
looking into a mirror and laughing. Willie, because I get so lonely, especially when the business is bad and there's nobody to talk to, I get the feeling that I'll never sell anything again, that I won't make a living for you, or a business, or a business for the boys. He talks to the woman's subsiding laughter. The woman prims at the mirror. There's so much I want to make for the woman. Me? You didn't make me, Willie. I picked you. Willie, please, you picked me? The woman, who is quite proper looking, Willie's age, I did. I've been sitting at that desk watching all the salesmen go by, day in, day out, but you've got such a sense of humor, and we do have such a good time together, don't we? Willie, sure, sure, he takes her into his arms. Why do you have to go now? The woman, it's two o'clock. Willie, no, come on in, he pulls her. The woman, uh, my sisters will be scandalized when you'll be back. Willie, oh, t two weeks about. Will you come up again? The woman, sure thing. You do make me laugh. It's good for me. She squeezes his arm, kisses him. I think you're a wonderful man. Willie, you picked me, huh? The woman, sure. Because you're so sweet and such a kidder. Willie, well, I'll see you the next time I'm in Boston. The woman, I'll put you right through the buyers. Willie, slapping her bottom. Right, well, bottom's up. The woman slaps him gently and laughs. You'll just kill me, Willie. He suddenly grabs her and kisses her roughly. You'll kill me. And thanks for the stockings. I love a lot of stockings. Well, good night. Willie, good night, and keep your pores open. Woman. Oh, Willie. The woman bursts out laughing, and Linda's laughter blends in. The woman disappears into the dark. Now, the area at the kitchen table brightens. Linda is sitting where she was at the kitchen table, but now is mending a pair of her silk stockings. Linda. You are Willie, the handsomest man. You've got no reason to feel that Willie coming out of the woman's dimming area and going over to Linda. I'll make it all up to you, Linda. I'll... Linda, there's nothing to make up to you. You're f doing fine, better than Willie, noticing her mending. What's that? Oh, Linda, I'm just mending my stockings. They're so expensive. Willie, angrily taking them, her. I don't... I won't have you mending stockings in this house. Now throw them out! Linda puts the stockings in her pocket. Bernard, entering on the run. Where is he? If he doesn't study... Willie, moving to the fourth stage with great agitation, you'll give him the answers. Bernard, I do, but I can't honor Regents. That's a state exam. They're liable to arrest me. Willie, where is he? I'll whip him. I'll whip him. Linda, and he, you know, better give that back, that football, Willie. It's not nice. Willie, Biff, where is he? Where, why is he talking to everything? Linda, he's too rough with the girls, Willie. All the mothers are afraid of him. Willie, I'll whip him. Bernard, he's driving the car without a license. The woman's laugh is heard. Willie, shut up! All the mothers, Willie, shut up. Bernard, backing quietly away and out. Mr. Birnbaum says he's stuck up. Willie, get out of here! Bernard, if he doesn't buckle down a flunk math, he goes off. Linda, he's right, Willie. You've got a Willie exploding at her. There's nothing the matter with him. You want him to be a worm like Bernard? He's got spirit and personality. As he speaks, Linda is almost in tears, exits to the living room. Willie's alone in the kitchen wilting and staring. The leaves are gone. It is night again, and the apartment houses look down from behind. Willie, loaded with it. Loaded! What is he stealing? Giving it back, isn't he? Why is he stealing? What did I tell him? I never in my life told him anything but decent things. Happy in pajamas, he comes downstairs. Willie suddenly becomes aware of Happy's presence. Happy. Uh, let's go now. Come on. Willie is sitting down at the kitchen table. Huh. Why did he have to wax the floors herself? Every time she waxes that floor, she keels over. She knows that. Happy, shh, take it easy. What brought you back tonight? Uh, Willie, I got, it was awful scared. I nearly hit a kid in Yonkers. God, but why didn't I go to Alaska with my brother Ben that time? Ben, that man was a genius. That man was a success. Incarcerate, what a mistake. He begged me to go. Happy, well, there's no use in, well, you guys, there was a man started with the clothes on his back and ended up with the diamond mines. Happy. Boy, someday I'd like to know how he did it. Willie, what's the mystery? The man knew what he wanted. He went out and got it. Walked into the jungle and comes out at the age of 21 and he's rich. The world is an oyster, but if you don't crack it open on a mattress. Happy. Pop, I told you I'm going to retire you for life. Willie, you're retiring me in life on 70 goddamn dollars a week? And your woman and your car and your apartment and you'll retire me for life? Christ, I can get past the office today. What are you guys? Where are you? The woods are burning. I can't drive a car. Charlie has appeared in the doorway. He's a large man, slow as speech, 
Iconic, immovable, and all he says, despite what he says, there is pity and now trepidation. He has a rope-covered pajama slipper on his feet and edges of the kitchen. Charlie, uh, everything all right? Happy, yeah, Charlie, everything, uh, Willie, what's the matter? Charlie, I heard some noise, I thought something happened. Yeah. Can't we do something about the walls? You sneeze in here and my house uh, blows it off. Happy, let, let's go to bed, Dad. Come on, Charlie signals Happy to go. Willie, you go ahead, I'm not tired at the moment. Happy, to Willie. Take it easy, huh? He exit. Willie, wh what are you doing up? Charlie, sitting down at the kitchen table opposite Willie. I, I couldn't sleep good. I, I had heartburn. Willie, uh, well, don't you know how to eat? Charlie, I can eat with my mouth. Willie, no, you're ignorant. You gotta know about vitamins and things like that. Charlie, oh, come on, let's shoot. Tire you out a little. Willie, hesitantly. All right, you got cards? Charlie, taking a death from his pocket. Yeah, I got them someplace. What is it with those vitamins? Willie, dealing. They build up your bones. Mm, chemistry. Charlie, yeah, but there's no bones in a heartburn. Willie, what are you talking about? Don't you know the first thing about it? Charlie, don't get insulted. Willie, what are you talking about? Something you don't know anything about. The airplane. Pause. Charlie, what are you doing home? Willie, a little trouble with the car. Charlie, oh, pause. I'd like to take a trip to California. Willie, you don't say. Charlie, you want a job? Willie, I've got a job. I told you that, after a slight pause. What the hell are you offering me a job for? Charlie, don't get insulted. Willie, don't insult me. Charlie, I don't see any sense in it. You have to go on this way. Willie, I got a job. I got a good job. Well, what do you keep coming in here for? Charlie, you want me to go? Willie, after a slight pause, withering. I can't understand. He's going back to Texas again. What the hell is that? Charlie, let him go. I, I got nothing to give him, Charlie. I'm clean. I'm clean. Charlie, he won't starve. None of them starve. Forget about him. Willie, th then what have I got to remember? Charlie, you take it too hard. To hell with him. When a deposit bottle is broken, you don't get your nickel back. Willie, that's easy enough for you to say. Charlie, th th that ain't easy for me to say. Willie, did you see the ceiling I put up in my living room? Yeah, it's a nice piece of work. Yeah, to put it up in the ceiling is a mystery to me. How'd you do it? Willie, what's the difference? Charlie, well, talk about it. Willie, you gonna put up a ceiling? Charlie, how do I put up a ceiling? Willie, well, then what the hell you bother me for? Charlie, you're insulted again. Willie, a man who can't handle tools is not a man. You're disgusting. Charlie, don't call me disgusting, Willie. Uncle Ben, carrying a, a valise and umbrella, enters the fourth stage from around the right corner. He is a solid man in his 60s with a mustache and authoritative air. He is utterly certain of his destiny, and there is an aura of far places around him. He enters exactly as Willie speaks. Willie, I'm getting awfully tired, Ben. Ben's music is heard. They look around. Everything. Charlie, good, keep playing. You'll sleep better. Did you call me Ben? Ben looks at his watch. Willie, that's funny. For a second there, you reminded me of my brother Ben. Ben, I only have a few minutes, he strolls, inspecting the place. Willie and Charlie are Continue playing. Charlie, you never heard from him again, huh? Since that time? Uh, didn't Linda tell you? A couple of weeks ago, we got a letter from uh, his wife in Africa. He died. Charlie, that's so. Ben chuckling. So this is Brooklyn, huh? Charlie, well, maybe you're in for some of this money, huh? Willie, nah, they had seven sons. There's just one opportunity I had with that man. Ben, I must make a train, William. There are several properties I'm looking for in Alaska. Willie, sure, sure. If I'd gone to Alaska that time, everything would have been totally different. Charlie, go on. You froze to death up there. Willie, what are you talking about? Opportunity is tremendous in Alaska, Willie. I'm surprised you're not up there. Willie, sure, tremendous. Charlie, huh? Willie, there was only a man I've ever met who knew the answers. Charlie, who? Ben, how tall are you? Willie, taking, uh, talking a pot. Smiling. Fine, fine. Charlie, pretty sharp tonight. Ben, is mother living with you? Willie, no, she died a long time ago. Charlie, who? Ben, that's too bad. Fine specimen of a lady. Mother, Willie to Charlie, huh? Ben, I'd hope you see the old girl. Charlie, who died? Ben, haven't heard anything from father, have you? Willie, unnerved. What do you mean, who died? Charlie, taking a pot. What are you talking about? Ben, looking at his watch. William, it's half past eight. Willie, as though to dispel confusion, he angrily stops Charlie's hand. It's my build, Charlie. I put the ace. Willie, if you don't know how to play the game, I'm not going to throw my money away on you. Charlie, rising. It was my ace, for God's sakes. Willie, I'm not through. I'm through. Ben, when did mother die? Willie, long time ago. Uh, since the beginning, you never knew how to play cards. Charlie picks up the cards and goes to the door. All right, next time I'll bring a deck with five aces. Willie, I don't play that kind of game. Charlie turning to him, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Willie, yeah, Charlie, yeah, he goes out. Willie slamming the door after him. Ignoramus, Ben, as Willie comes toward him through the wall of the line of the kitchen. So, you're William. 
Willie is shaking Ben's hand. Ben, I've been waiting for you for so long. What's the answer? How did you do it? Ben, oh, there's a story in that. Linda enters the four stages of old, carrying the wash basket. Linda, is this Ben? Ben, gallantly, how do you do, my dear? Linda, where have you been all these years? Willie's always wondered why you Willie, pulling Ben away from her impatiently. Where is Dad? Didn't you follow him? How did you get started? Ben, well, I don't know how much you remember. Uh, Willie, well, it was just a baby, of course, only three or four years old. Ben, three years and eleven months. Willie, what a memory, Ben. Ben, I have many enterprises, William, and I have never kept books. Willie, I remember I was sitting under the wagon in, was it Nebraska? Ben, it was South Dakota. I gave you a bunch of wildflowers. Willie, I remember you walking away down some open road. Ben, laughing, I was going to find father in Alaska. Willie, where is he? Ben, at that age, I had a very faulty view of geography, William. I discovered after a few days that I was heading due south. So, instead of Alaska, I ended up in Africa. Linda, Africa. Willie, the Gold Coast. Ben, principal diamond mines. Linda, diamond mines, Ben, yes, my dear, but I've only got a few minutes. Willie, no, no, boys, young Biff and Happy enter. Listen to this. This is your Uncle Ben, a great man. Tell my boys, Ben. Ben, why, boys, when I was 17, I walked into the jungle, and when I was 21, I walked out, he laughed. By God, I was rich. Willie, to the boys, you see what I've been talking about? The greatest things can happen. Ben, glancing at his watch, I have an appointment in Ketchikan on Tuesday week. Willie, no, Ben, please tell us about Dad. I want my boys to hear. Uh, I want them to know the kind of stock they spring from. All I remember was a man in a big beard, and I was in Mama's lap singing around a fire and some kind of high music. Ben, his flute. He played the flute. Willie, sure, the flute, that's right. New music is heard. A high, rollicking tune. Ben, father was very great and a wild-hearted man. We would start in Boston, and he'd toss the whole family around in the wagon, and he'd drive the team right across the country, through Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, and all the western states. And we'd stop in the towns and sell the flutes that he'd made on the way. Great inventor, father. Wish one gadget he made more than a week than a man you could make in a lifetime. Willie, that's just the way I'm bringing them up. Ben Rugged. Uh, liked all around. Biff. Ben. Yeah, it's a Biff. Hit that boy. Hard as you can. He pounds on his stomach. Biff. Oh, no, sir. Ben. Talking boxing stance. Come on. Get to me. He laughs. Willie. Go at it, Biff. Go ahead, show him. Biff, okay. He cocks his fist and starts in. Linda to Willie. Why must he fight, dear? Ben, sparring him off uh, with Biff. Good boy, good boy. Willie, how's that, Ben? Ah, uh, happy. Give him the left, Biff. Linda, why are you fighting? Ben, good boy. Suddenly comes in, trips Biff, and stands over him, the point of his umbrella poised over Biff's eye. Linda, look out, Biff. Biff, gee. Ben, patting Biff's knee. Never fight with a stranger, boy. You'll never get out of that jungle that way, talking to Linda's hand and bowing. It was an honor and a pleasure to meet you, Linda. Linda, withdrawing her hand coldly, frightened. Uh, have a nice trip. Ben to Willie. Any luck with you and your, uh, what do you, uh, do? Willie, selling. Yes, well, he raises his hand in a farewell to all. Uh, Willie, no, Ben, I, I don't want you to think, uh, he takes Ben's arm to show him. It's Brooklyn, I know, but we hunt too. Ben, really? Now? And, uh, Willie, uh, sure, there's snakes and rabbits, and that's why I moved out of here. Why, Biff, you can fell on any one of these streets in any time. Boy, go right over to the building in the apartment house and get some sand. We're gonna rebuild the entire front stoop right now. Watch this, Ben. Ben, uh, Biff, yes, sir, on the double, Hap, Hap is he, he and Biff runs off. I lost weight, Pop, you notice? Charlie enters the kitchen even before the boys are gone. Charlie, listen, if they steal any more from that building, the watchman and the cops will put on them. Linda to Willie, don't let Biff, Ben laughs lustily. Willie, you should have seen the lumber they brought home last week. At least six, uh, at least a dozen six by tens worth all kinds of money. Charlie, listen, if that watchman, Willie, I gave them hell understand, but I got a couple of fearless characters here. Charlie, Willie, the jails are full of fearless characters. Ben clapping on Willie on the back with a laugh at Charlie and the stock exchange friend. Willie joining in Ben's laughter. Where are the rest of your pants? Charlie, my wife brought them. Willie. Now, you need is a golf club, and you can go upstairs and go to sleep, to Ben. Great athlete. Between him and his son, Bernard, they can't hammer a nail. Bernard rushing in. The watchman's chasing Biff. Willie angrily. Shut up. He's not stealing anything. Linda alarmed, hurrying off left. Where is he? Biff, dear. She, ex she exits. Willie, moving towards the left, away from Ben. There's nothing wrong. What's the matter with you? Ben. Nervy boy. Good. Willie laughing. Oh, nerves of iron, that Biff. Charlie, don't know what it is. My New England man comes back and he's bleeding. They murdered him up here. Willie, it's contacts, Charlie. I got important contacts. Charlie, sarcastically. Glad to hear it, Willie. Come in later. We'll shoot a little casino. I'll make some of your Portland money. He laughs at Willie and exits. Willie turns to Ben. Business is bad. It's murderous, but not for me, of course. Ben, I'll stop on my way back to Africa. 
Willie Longingly, can't you stay a few days? You're just what I need, Ben. Because I, I have a fine position here, but I, well, Dad left when I was such a baby I never had a chance to talk to him, and I still feel kind of temporary about myself. Uh, ben, I'll be late for my train. They are opposite ends of the stage. Willie, Ben, my boys, can't we talk? They'd go into the jaws of hell for me, but I... I... Ben, William, you're being a first raid with your boys. Outstanding. Menly chaps. Willie, handing on to his words. Oh, Ben, that's good to hear, but sometimes I'm I'm afraid I'm not teaching them how... Uh, how I should teach them. Ben, with a great weight of uh, to each word and with a certain vicious audacity. William, when I walked into the jungle, I was 17. When I walked out, I was 21. And by God, I was rich. He goes off into the darkness around the corner of his house. Willie was rich. That's just the spirit I want to imbue with them, to walk into the jungle. I was right. I was right. I was right. Ben is gone, but Willie is speaking to him as Linda. In the night room, gown and robe, enters the kitchen, glances around for Willie, and then goes down to the corner of the door, looks out and sees him, comes down to his left. He looks at her. Linda, Willie, dear, Willie, Willie, I was right. Willie, I was right. Linda, do you hear some cheese? He can't answer. It's very late, darling. Come to bed. Willie, looking straight up. Gotta break your neck to see a star in this yard. Linda, you coming in? Willie, whatever happened to that diamond watch fob? Uh, remember when Ben came home from Africa that time and didn't give me a watch fob with a diamond in it? Linda, you pawned it here 12, 13 years ago for Biff's radio correspondence course. Willie, gee, that was a beautiful thing. I'll take a walk. Linda, but you're in your slippers. Willie's starting to go on to the house and at the left. I was right. I was. Half to Linda as he goes shaking his head. What a man. There was a man worth talking to. I was right. Linda calling after Willie. But in your slippers, Willie. Willie's almost gone when Biff in his pajamas comes down the stairs and enters the kitchen. Biff, what is he doing out there? Linda, shh. Biff, God almighty, Mom. How long has he been doing this? Linda, don't. He'll hear you. Biff, what the hell is the matter with him? Linda, it'll pass by morning. Biff, shouldn't we do anything? Oh, my dear, you should do a lot of things, but there's nothing to do. Go to sleep. Happy. Comes down the stair and sits on the steps. Happy. I've never heard him so loud, Mom. Linda, well, we'll come around more often. You'll hear him. She sits down at the table and mends the lining of Willie's jacket. Biff, why don't you ever write me about this, Mom? Linda, how would I write you? For over three months, you've had no address. Biff, I was on the move, you know. I thought of you all the time, you know that, but don't you, pal? Linda, I know, dear, but he, he still likes to have a letter just to know that there's still a possibility for better things. Biff, he's not like this all the time, is he? Linda, it's when you come home, he's always the worst. Biff, when I come home? Linda, when you write you're coming, he's all smiles and talks about the future, and he's just wonderful, and the closer you come to him, the more shaky he gets, and by the time you get there, he's arguing, and he can't seem to angry at you. I think he's just, he can't bring himself to, to open up at you. Why are you so hateful to each other? Why is that? Biff, evasively. I'm not hateful, Mom. Linda, but you've sooner come into that door, and then you're fighting. Biff, I don't know why. I mean to change. I'm trying, Mom. You understand? Linda, are you home to stay now? Biff, I, I don't know. I want to look around and see what he's doing. Linda, Biff, you can't look around all your life, can you? Biff. I can just take hold, Mom. I can't take hold of some kind of life. Linda, Biff is a man, not a bird, to come home to go in the springtime. Biff, your hair. He touches your hair. Your hair got so gray. Linda, oh, it's been gray since you were in high school. I just stopped dyeing it, that's all. Biff, dye it again, will ya? I don't want my pal looking old. He smiles. <laughs> You're such a boy. You think you can go away for a year and you got this in your head now and now people a day will knock you on this door and there'll be strange people here. Biff, what are you talking about? You're not even 60, Mom. Biff, uh, wh what do you mean about your father? Biff, lamely. Well, I mean him too. Happy. He admires Pop. Linda, Biff, dear, if you'll go and if you don't have any feelings for him, then you, can, you can't have any feelings for me. Biff, sure I can, Mom. Linda, no. You just come home to me because I love him, with a threat, but only a threat of tears. He's the dearest man in the world to me, and I won't have anyone making him feel unwanted and low and blue. You've got to make up your mind now, darling. There's no leeway anymore. Either he's your father, and you pay him that respect, or else you're not going to come here. I know that's not easy if you get along with, but nobody knows him better than me, but Willie, from the left, with a laugh. Hey, hey, Biffo! Biff, starting to go after Willie. What the hell is the matter with him? Happy stops him. Linda, don't don't go near him. Biff, stop making excuses for him. He's always, always wiped the floor with you. Never had an ounce for respect for you. Happy, he's always had respect for Biff. What the hell do you know about it? Happy, surely. 
Don't call him crazy, Biff. He's got no character. Charlie wouldn't do this. Not in his own house, spewing out that vomit from his mind. Happy. Charlie never had to cope with anything he's got to. Biff, people are worse off than Willie Loman, believe me. I've seen them. Linda, then make Charlie your father, Biff. You can't do that, can you? I don't say he's a great man. Willie Loman never made a lot of money. His name is never in the paper. He's not the finest character that ever lived, but he's a husband being, and he's a terrible thing that ever happened to him. So attention must be paid. He's not allowed to fall into his grave like an old dog. Attention, attention must be finally paid to such a person you called him crazy. Biff, I didn't mean... No, a lot of people think he's lost his balance, but you don't have to be very smart to know what trouble he is. The man is exhausted. Happy. Sure. Linda. A small man can be just exhausted as a great man. He works for a company 36 years this March. Opens up an unheard of uh, territory to their trademark. And now in his old age, they take his salary away. Happy. Indignantly. I didn't know that, Mom. You never asked, my dear. Now that you get your spending money someplace, you don't trouble your mind with him. Happy. But I gave you money last... Uh, Glinda, Christmas time, fifty dollars to fix the hot water. It costs ninety-seven fifty. For five years, he's been on straight commission, like a beginner and unknown. Biff, those ungrateful bastards. Linda, aren't they any worse than his sons? When he bought the business, when he was young, they were glad to see him. But now his old friends, the old buyers that loved him, they always found some order to hand him a pinch. They're all dead, retired. He used to be able to make six, seven calls a day in Boston. Now he uses his time. Now he uses valises out of his car and puts a set on his walking talks now. He drives 700 miles and when he gets there, no one knows him anymore. No one welcomes him. And what goes through a man's mind driving 700 miles home without having earned a cent? Why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't he talk to himself? Why? When he has to go to Charlie and borrow fifty dollars a week and pretend to me that it's his his pay, how long can you can you go that now? How long? You see what I'm sitting with here for and waiting. You tell me he has no character. The man who never worked a day but for your benefit. And then when he does, he gets a medal for that and his reward to turn around the age of sixty three and find his sons who he loved better than his life on a philandering bum. Happy mom. That's all you are, my baby, to Biff. And you, what happened to all the love you had for him? You were such pals. How could you talk to him on the phone every night? How lonely he was until you would come home to you. Biff, all, all right, Mom, I live here in my room, and I'll get a job. I'll keep away from him, that's all. Linda, no, Biff, you can't stay here and fight all the time. Biff, he threw me out of his house, remember that? Linda, well, why do you do that? I never knew why. Biff, because I know he's a fake, and he doesn't like anybody else around who knows. Linda, why a fake? In what way? What do you mean? Biff, just don't lay it at my feet. It's between me and him. That's all I have to say. I'll be chipped from now on. He, he'll settle for half my paycheck. He'll be all right. I'm going back to bed. He starts with the sales. Linda, he won't be all right. Biff, turning on the stairs furiously. I hate this city, and I'll stay here. Now, what do you want? Biff, uh, Linda, he's dying. Biff. Happy turns to her quickly, shocked. Uh, Biff, after a pause, why is he dying? Uh, Linda, he's been trying to kill himself. Uh, Biff, with great horror, how? I live from day to day. Biff, what are you talking about? Linda, I remember you wrote he smashed up a car again in February. Biff, well, the insurance inspector came. He said that they have evidence that these accidents in last year weren't accidents. Uh, happy, how can they tell? That's a lie. Uh, it seems there's a woman... She takes a breath as... Uh, Biff, Linda, sharply contained. What woman? Linda, simultaneously, and this woman... Uh, Linda, what? Biff, nothing, go ahead. Linda, what did you say? Nothing, I, I, I just said what woman? Biff, well, what about her? Well, Linda, well, it seems that she was walking down the road and he saw his car. She says he wasn't driving that fast at all and then he didn't skid. He said he came to that little bridge and then he deliberately smashed into the railing and... Uh, it was only shallowness of the water that saved him. Biff, oh no, he'll probably just fell asleep again. Linda, I don't think he fell asleep. Biff, why not? Linda, last month with great difficulty. Oh, boys, it's so hard to say a thing like this. He's just a big, stupid man to you, but I'll tell you, there's more good in him than many other people. She chokes and wipes her eyes. I was looking there for a fuse. The lights blew out. And when I went down to the cellar and behind the fuse box, it just happened to fall out. It was just a length of rubber pipe, uh, short. 
I mean, no kidding. There's a little attachment at the end of it. I knew right away it was sure enough the water bomb that uh, there was a little nipple on the end of the gas pipe. Angry, that jerk. Did you take? Have you have it taken off? Linda, no, no, I'm I'm ashamed too. How can I mention it to him? Every day I go down there with that little rubber pipe, but when he comes home, I, I put it back to where it was. How can I insult him that way? I, I don't know what to do. I live from day to day, boys. I'll tell you. I know I every thought in his mind. It sounds so old fashioned, silly, but I'll tell you. When he puts his whole life into you and you've turned your back to him, she's bent over in the chair, weeping, her face in her hands. Biff, I swear to God, Biff, Biff, his life is in your hands. Happy to Biff. How do you like that, damn fool? Biff, kissing her. All right, all right, pal, it's all right. It's all settled now. I've been remiss, I know that, Mom. But now I'll stay, and I swear to you, I'll apply myself. Kneeling in front of her in a fever of self-reproach, it's just, you see, Mom, I don't fit in business. I don't. I know that. I won't try. I'll try, and I'll, I'll make good. Happy. Sure you will. The, the trouble with you in business was you never tried to please people. Biff, I know I happy. Like when you said you worked for Harrison's, Bob Harrison said that you were tops, and then when you told him some damn fool-like thing like whistling songs in the elevator like a comedian. Biff, against happy. So what? I like to whistle sometimes. Uh, who, you know, you don't raise a guy who's responsible to whistles in the elevator. Linda, well, don't argue with it now. Biff, and his resenting rising. Well, don't you run off. Don't you take off sometimes, don't you? Oh, a nice summer day. Happy. Yeah, but I cover myself. Linda, boys, happy. If I'm just going to take a fade, the boss can call my name any number where I'm supposed to be, and they'll swear to him that I just left. I'll tell you something, and I hate to say Biff, but the business world, some of them just think you're crazy. Biff, anger. Screw the business world. Happy. All right, screw it. Screw it. Great. But cover yourself. Linda, and hap, hap. Biff, and I don't care what they think. They've laughed at that for years, and you know why? Because we don't belong in this nuthouse of an obsessive city. We should be mixing cement on some open plane, or carpenters, a company is allowed to whistle. Willie walks in from the entrance of the house that left. Well, even your grandfather was better than a carpenter. They watch him. You never grew up. Bernard does not whistle in the elevator, I assure you. Biff, as though to laugh Willie out of it. Yeah, but you do, Pop. Willie, I never in my life whistled in an elevator. And who in the business world thinks I'm crazy? Biff, I didn't mean it like that, Pop. Now, don't you make a whole thing out of it, will ya? Willie, go back to the West. Be a carpenter, a cowboy. Enjoy yourself. Linda, Willie, he was just saying I heard what he said. Happy, trying to quiet Willie. Hey, Pop, come on now. Willie, continuing over Happy's lines. They laugh at me, huh? Go to Fillane's. Go to the hub. Go to the slider rooms, Boston. Call out the name Willie Lowen and see what happens. Big shot. Biff. All right, Pop. Willie. Big. Biff. All right, Willie. Why don't you always insult me? Biff, I didn't say a word to Linda. Did I say a word? Linda, he didn't say anything, Willie. Willie, going to the doorway of the living room. All right, good night, good night. Linda. Willie, dear. He just decided. Willie. To Biff. I'll get tired of hanging around tomorrow. Paint the ceiling. I'll put it up in the living room. Biff, I'm leaving early tomorrow. Happy, he's going to see Bill Oliver, Pop. Willie, interested. Oliver, for what? Biff, with reverse, but trying. Trying. He always said he'd say stake me. I'd like to go into business, so maybe I can take him up on it. Linda, isn't that wonderful? <sighs> Willie, don't interrupt. That's wonderful. What about it? There's 50 men in the, in the city of New York who'd stake him to Biff. Sporting goods? Uh, Biff, I guess so. It's something about it, and... You know something about it. You know Sporting Goods is much better than Spalding, for God's sakes. How much is he giving you? Biff, I don't know. I didn't even see him yet, but Willie. Then what are you talking about? Biff, getting angry. Well, all I said was I'm going to see him, that's all. Biff, turning away. Ah, you're counting your chickens again. Biff, starting left for the stairs. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to sleep. Willie, calling after him. Don't curse in this house. Biff, turning since... When do you get so clean? Happy, trying to stop them. Wait a... Biff, don't use that language, Jimmy. I won't have it. Happy, grabbing Biff, shouts, Wait a minute, I've got an idea. i got a feasible idea. Come here, Biff. Let's talk this over now. Let's talk some sense here. When I was down in Florida last time, I thought a great idea to sell sporting goods. It just came back to me. You and I and Biff, we'll have a line, the Loman line. We'll trade a couple of weeks, and I'll put you on a couple of exhibitions, see? Willie, that's an idea. Happy. 
wait, we formed two basketball teams, see? Two water polo teams, we play each other, it's a million dollars worth of publicity, two brothers, see? The Loman Brothers displays in the Royal Palms of all hotels. And banners over the rings of the basketball courts, Loman Brothers, baby, we could sell sporting goods. Willie, that's a one million dollar idea. Linda, it's marvelous. Biff, I'm in great shape as far as that's concerned. Happy. And the beauty of it, Biff, wouldn't it be like a business? We'd be all playing balls again. Biff, ex uh, enthused. Yeah, that's Willie. Million dollar. Happy, and you wouldn't get fed up with it, Biff. It'd be the family again. There'd be the old honor and camaraderie, and if you wanted to go off for a swim or something, well, you'd do it without some smart cocky getting up ahead of you. Well, he licked the world. You guys could absolutely lick the civilized world. Biff, I'll see all of our tomorrow hap. If we could work that out, Linda, maybe some things are beginning to Willie. Wildly enthused to Linda. Stop interrupting to Biff. But. Don't hear where the sports jacket and slacks when you see Oliver. Biff. No, I'll. Willie. A uh, business suit and talk as little as possible and don't crack any jokes. Biff. He didn't like me. Always liked me. Linda. He loved you. Willie to Linda. Will you stop to Biff? Walking every. Walking very serious. You are not applying for a boy's job. Money is to pass. Be quiet, be fine, and be serious. Everybody likes a kidder, but nobody lends him money. Happy. I'll try and get some myself, Biff. I'm sure I can. Willie. I see great things for you, kids. I think your troubles are over. But remember, start big and you'll end big. Ask for 15. How much are you going to ask for? Biff. Uh, gee, I don't know. Well, and Willie, don't say gee. Gee is a boy's brother. A man is walking in for $15,000 and does not say gee. Biff, I ten, I think. I would top, you know, would top, though. Don't be so modest. You've always started so low. Walk in with a big laugh. Don't look worried. Start off with a couple of your good stories and lighten things up. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Because personality always wins the day. Linda Oliver always thought the highest of him. Willie, will you let me talk? Biff, don't yell at her, Pop, will you? Willie angrily, I wasn't talking. Wasn't I? Biff, I don't like yelling. Yelling at her all the time. I'm telling you, that's all. Willie, what are you talking about over this house? Linda, Willie, Willie, turning to her. Don't take a side all the goddamn it, all the time, goddamn it. But furiously, stop yelling at her. Willie suddenly pulling on his cheek, beating down and guilt-ridden. Give my best to Bill Oliver. He may he remember me. He exits through the living room doorway. Linda, her voice subdued. What do you have to start that for? Biff turns away. You see how sweet he was and. Talk so fully, she got over to Biff. Come up and say goodnight to him. Don't let him go to bed that way. Happy, come on, Biff. Let's buck him up. Linda, please, dear, just say goodnight. It takes so little to make him happy. Come. She goes through the living room. Do our way, calling upstairs in the living room. Your pajamas are hanging in the bathroom, Willie. Happy, looking towards where Linda went out. What a woman. They broke the mold when they made her. You know that, Biff? Biff, ease off salary. My God, working on commission? Happy, well, let's face it, he's no hotshot selling man, except that sometimes you have to admit he is a sweet personability. Biff, deciding, lend me ten bucks, will you? I want to buy some new tires. Happy, I'll take you to play tomorrow, I know, beautiful stuff. We'll wear some of one of my striped shirts tomorrow. Biff, she got gray, mom got an old, got awfully old. Gee, I'm going to go to Oliver tomorrow and... Knock him for a happy. Come on up. Tell that to dad. Let's give him a whirl. Come on. Biff steamed up. You know, with 10,000 bucks, boy. Happy as they go into the living room. That's the talk, Biff. From within the living room fading off, you're going to live with me, kid. And any babe you just want to say the word. The last lines are hardly heard. They are mounting the stairs to their parents' bedroom. Linda entering her room and addressing Willie, who was in the bathroom. She is straightening up the bed for him. Can you do anything about the shower? It drips. Willie from the bathroom. All of a sudden, everything falls to pieces. Goddamn plumbing ought to be sued. Those people, I hardly finish putting in the thing, and his words rumble off. Linda, I'm just wondering, if Oliver, you know, you will remember him, you think he might? Willie, coming out of the bathroom in his pajamas. Remember him? What's the matter with you? You crazy? If he stayed with Oliver, he'd be on top right now. Will Oliver get to look at him? You won't know the average caliber anymore. The average young man today, he is... He's getting into his bed. 
He's got a caliber of zero. Greatest thing in the world for him and was to bum around. Biff and Happy enter the bedroom. Slight pause. Willie stops short, looking at Biff. Glad to hear it, boy. Happy. Uh, he wanted to say goodnight to you, sport. Willie, to Biff. Yeah, knock him dead, boy. What do you want me to tell him? Just take it easy, Pop. Good night. He turns to go. Willie, unable to resist. And if anything falls into the deck while you're talking to him like a package or something, don't pick it up. They have office boys for that. Linda, I'll make a big breakfast. Willie, will you let me finish? To Biff. Tell him you were in the business in the West, not far more. Biff. All right, Dad. Linda, I think everything Willie, going right through his speech, and don't undersell yourself, no less than $15,000. Biff, unable to hear him. Okay, good night, Mom. He starts moving. Willie, because you got a greatness in you, Biff, remember that. You've got all kinds of greatness. He lies back, exhausted. Biff walks out. Linda, calling after Biff. Sleep well, darling. Happy. I'm going to I'm gonna get married, Mom. I wanted to tell you. Linda, go to sleep, dear. Happy. Going. I just wanted to tell you. Willie, keep up the good work, Happy. Exits. God, remember that Ebbets Fields game, the championship of the city? Linda, just rest. Should I sing to you? Willie, yeah, sing to me. Linda hums a soft lullaby. When that team came out, he was the tallest, remember? Linda, oh yes, and in gold. Biff enters the darkened kitchen, takes a cigarette, and leaves the house. He comes downstage in a golden pool of light. He smokes, staring at the night. Willie, like a young god, Hercules, something like that. And the sun, the sun all around him. Remember how he waved to me right up from the field with the representatives of three colleges standing by? And the buyers, I thought all the cheers when he came out, low men, low men, low men. And God Almighty, he'd uh, be great yet. A star like that, magnificent, can never really fade away. The light on Willie is fading. The gas heater begins to glow through the kitchen wall near the curtains and uh, the blue flame underneath the red coils. Linda, timidly, Willie, dear, what has, got, what has he got against you? Willie, I'm so tired. Don't talk anymore. Biff slowly returns in the kitchen. He stops, stares towards the heater. Willie, will you ask Howard to let you work in New York? Willie, first things in the morning. Everything will be all right. Biff reaches behind the heater and draws out a length of rubber tubing. He is horrified and turns his head towards Willie in the room, still dimly lit, from which strains of Linda, desperate but monotonous, humming rise. Willie staring through the window in the morning. She look at the moon moving between the buildings. Biff wraps the tubing around his hand and quickly goes up the stairs. Curtain. That concludes Act 1. I'm going to get a drink of water in just a couple of seconds. Get ready for Act 2. I dearly hope at this time that you too have a copy of Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. It's great to read along. And now we begin Act Two. Act Two. Music is heard, gray and bright. The curtain rises as the music fades away. Willie, in shirt sleeves, is sitting at the kitchen table, sipping coffee, his hat in a lap. Linda is filled his cup when she can. Willie, wonderful coffee. Meal in itself. Willie, no, take a breath. Linda, you look so rested, dear. Willie, I slept like a dead one. First time in months. Imagine sleeping till ten on a Tuesday morning. Boys left nice and early, huh? Linda, well, they were out of here by eight o'clock. Willie, good work. Linda, it was so sh thrilling to see them leaving together. I can't get over the shaving lotion in this house. Willie, smiling. Hmm... Linda, Biff was very changing this morning. His whole attitude seemed to be hopeful. He couldn't wait to get downtown to see Oliver. Willie, he's heading for a change. There's no question. There simply aren't certain men that take longer to get uh, solidified. How did he dress? Linda, his blue suit. He's so handsome in that suit. He could be uh, anything in that suit. Willie, gets up from the table. Linda holds his jacket for him. Willie, there is no question, no question at all. Gee, on the way home tonight, I'd like to buy some seeds. Linda, laughing. <laughs> That'd be wonderful, but not enough sun gets back there. Nothing'll grow anymore. 
Willie, you wait, kid. Before it's all over, we're going to get a little place out in this country, and I'll raise some vegetables and a couple of chickens. Linda, you'll do it yet, dear. Willie walks out of his jacket. Linda follows him. Willie, and they'll get married and come for a weekend. I built a little guest home because I got so many fine tools, and I all I need is a little lumber and some peace of mind. Linda, joyfully, I sewed the lining. Willie, I could build two guest houses, and they'd both come. Did he decide and how much he's going to ask Oliver for? Linda, getting him into the jacket. He didn't mention it, but I imagine ten or fifteen thousand. You're going to have to talk to Howard today. Yeah, I'll just talk to him straight and simple. Uh, you know, just have to take me off the road. Linda, Ed Willie, don't forget to ask for a little advance because we've got the insurance premium. It's the grace period now. Willie, uh, what hundred? Linda, a hundred and eight and eighty sixty eight. That's because we're a little short again. Why are we short? Well, you had the monitor on this. That stu you had the motor job on the car, William. That goddamn Studebacher. Linda, and you've got one more payment on the refrigerator, Willie. But it just broke again, Linda. Well, it's old, dear, Willie. I told you we've got that a well-advised machine. Charlie bought a General Electric, and it's twenty years old, but it's still good. That son of a bitch. Linda, but Willie, Willie, whoever heard of a Hastings refrigerator? Once in my life, I would like to own something outright before it's broken. I'm always in the race in the junkyard. I just finished paying for the car, and it's on its last legs. The refrigerator consumes belt like a goddamn maniac. The time those things, they time them so when you finally paid for them, they're used up. Linda, buttoning up his jacket as he unbuttons it, I told him about $200 would carry us here. But in that includes the payment last on the mortgage. After this payment, Willie, the house belongs to us. Willie, it's been 25 years. Linda, Biff was nine years old when we bought it. Lily, well, that's a great thing. To whether a 25-year mortgage is Linda, it's an accomplishment. Willie, it, all the cement, the lumber, the reconstruction I put in this house, there ain't a crack to be found in it anymore. Linda, well, it's served its purpose. Willie, what purpose? Some stranger will come along, move in, and that's that. If only Biff would take this house and raise a family. He starts to go, goodbye, I'm late. Linda's suddenly remembering. Oh, I forgot, you're supposed to meet with them for dinner. Willie, me? Uh, Linda, at Frank Chop House on 48th near 6th Avenue. Willie, is that so? How about you? Linda, no, just the three of you. They're going to blow you out of a big meal. Linda, don't say. Who thought of that? Linda... Biff came to me this morning, Willie, and he said, Tell Dad you want me to blow him to a big meal. Be there at 6 o'clock. You and your boys are going to go out and have dinner. Billy, gee whiz. That's really something. I'm going to knock Howard for a loop, kid. I'll get in advance and I'll come home. Uh, the New York job, goddammit. Now I'm going to do it. Linda, oh, there's the spirit, Willie. Willie, I'll never get behind a wheel the rest of my life. Linda, it's changing, Willie. I can feel it changing. Willie, beyond a question, goodbye, I'm late. He starts to go again. Linda, calling after him as she runs to the kitchen for a handkerchief. You got your glasses? Willie, feels for them, comes back in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, got my glasses. Linda, giving him the handkerchief and a handkerchief. Yes, handkerchief. And your saccharine? Willie, yeah, my saccharine. Linda, be careful on the subway stairs. She kisses him, and a silk stocking is seen hanging from her hand. Willie notices it. Will you stop mending stockings? At least while I'm in the house. It gets me nervous. I can't tell you. Please. Linda hides the stockings in her hand as she follows Willie across the forest stage in front of the house. Linda, remember Frank Chop's house? Willie, passing the apron. Maybe beets would grow out there. Linda, laughing. But you tried so many times. Willie, yeah, well, don't work hard today. He disappears the right corner of the house. Linda, be careful. As Willie vanishes, Linda waves to him. Suddenly, the phone rings. She runs off stage and into the kitchen and lifts it. Linda, hello. Oh, Biff, I'm so glad you called. I just, yes, sure, I just told him. Yes, he'll be here for dinner at 6 o'clock. I didn't forget. Listen, I was just dying to tell you, you know about that little rubber pipe I told you about that he connected to the gas heater? Well, I finally decided to go down to the cellar this morning and take away and destroy it, but it's gone. Imagine, he took it away himself. It isn't there. She listens. When? Oh, then you took it. Oh, nothing. It's just that 
I'd hoped he'd taken away himself. Oh, I'm not worried, darling. It's just because this morning he had left in such high spirits. It was like the old days. I'm not afraid anymore. Did Mr. Oliver see you? Well, you just wait there, then. And make a nice impression on him, darling. I just don't perspire too much before the meeting. You'll see him and have a nice time with that. He may have big news, too. That's right, a New York job. And he might be sweet to him tonight, dear. Be loving to him because he's only a little boat looking for a harbor. He is, she is trembling with sorrow and joy. Oh, that's wonderful, Biff. You'll save his life. Thanks, darling. Just put your arm around him and smile when he comes into the restaurant. Give him a smile. That's the boy. Good boy, dear. You got your comb? That's fine. Goodbye, Biff, dear. In the middle of her speech, Howard Wagner, 36 wheels on small typewriter table on which the wire recording machine and proceeding to plug it in. This is the left forward stage. Lightly slow fades on Linda as it rises on Howard. Howard is intent on threading the machine and only glances over his shoulder as Willie appears. Willie, psst, psst. Howard, hello, Willie, come in. Willie, I'd like to have a little talk with you, Howard. Howard, sorry for keeping you waiting. I'll be with you in a minute. Willie, what's that, Howard? Howard, didn't you ever see one of these before? Wire recorder. Willie, oh, can we talk a minute? Howard, record things just got delivered yesterday. Been driving me crazy, the most terrific machine I ever saw in my life. I was up all night with it. Willie, what did you do with it? Howard, ah, I bought it for uh, dictation. But uh, you can do anything with it. Listen to this. Uh, I had it home last night. Listen to what I picked up. The first one is my daughter. Get this. He flicks at the switch, and a roll out the barrel is heard, being whistled. Listen to that kid whistle. Willie, that's lifelike, isn't it? Yeah. Tss, tss, seven years old. Get that tone. Willie, I'd like to ask a little favor of you. The whistling breaks off, and the voice of Howard's daughter is heard. His daughter. Now you, Daddy. Howard, she's crazy for me. Again, the same song is whistled. That's me. Ha. Huh. He winks. Willie, you're very good. The whistling breaks off again. The, mich the machine runs silent for a moment. Howard, shh. Get this now. This is my son. His son. The capital of Alabama is Montgomery. The capital of Arizona is Phoenix. The capital of Arkansas is Little Rock. The capital of California is Sacramento. And on and on. Howard, holding up five fingers. Five years old, Willie. <laughs> Willie, he'll make an announcer someday. His son continuing. The capital. Howard, get that. Alphabetical order. The machine breaks off suddenly. Wait a minute. The maid kicked the plug out. Uh, Willie, it certainly is a... <sighs> Shh, for God's sake. His son. It's nine o'clock. Below the watch time. So, I have to go to sleep. Willie, that really is... Howard, wait a minute. The next is my wife. They wait. Howard's voice. Go on. Say something. Pause. Well, you're gonna talk? His wife. I can't think of anything. Howard's voice. Well, talk. It's it's turning. His wife, shyly beaten. Hello. Silence. Oh, Howard, I can't talk into this. Howard snapping the machine off. That was my wife. Willie. Well, that is a wonderful machine. Can we... I can tell you, Willie, I'm gonna take my camera and my bandsaw and all my hobbies and... And out they go. This is the most fascinating relaxation I ever found. Willie, I, I'll get one myself. Howard, sure, they only are a hundred and a half. You can't do without it. Supposing you want to hear Jack Benny, see, but you can't be home and at that hour, so you tell the maid to turn the radio on when Jack Benny comes on, and this automatically goes on with the radio. Willie, and when you come home, you you can come home at twelve o'clock, one o'clock, anytime you like, and you can get yourself a coke and sit down and throw the switch and there's Jack Benny program in the middle of the night. Willie, I'm definitely going to get one, because lots of times I'm on the road, and I think to myself, what I must be missing on the radio. Howard, don't you have a radio in the car? Willie, well, yeah, but whoever thinks of turning it on. Well, Howard, say, aren't you supposed to be in Boston, Willie? Uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Howard. You got a minute? He draws a chair from the wing. Howard, what happened? What are you doing here? Willie, well, Howard, didn't you cry? You didn't crack up again, did you? Oh, no. Uh, Howard, geez, you have me worried there for a minute. What's the trouble? Willie, well, I'll tell you the truth, Howard. I've come to the decision that I'd rather not travel anymore. Not travel? Well, what will you do? Willie, remember Christmas time when you said you had that party here and you tried to think of some spot for me in here in town? Howard, with us? Willie, well, sure. Howard, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Well, I, I couldn't think of anything for you, Willie. Willie, I'll tell you, Howard, the kids are all grown up, you know. I don't need much anymore. I could take home, well, $65 a week and I could swing it. Howard, yeah, but Willie, see, uh, I, Willie, I'll tell you why, Howard. Uh, speaking frankly, in between the two of us, you know, I'm just a little tired. Howard, oh, I can understand that, Willie, but you've got a road, man, Willie, and 
Uh, we do the road business. We've only got a half dozen salesmen on the floor here. Willie, God knows, Howard. I've never asked a favor of any man, but I was there with the firm, and when your father uh, used to carry you in there in his arms... Howard, I know that, Willie, but... Willie, your father came to me the day you were born. You asked me what I thought of the name Howard. May he rest in peace. Willie, your father came to me that day you were born, and, uh, and I appreciate that, Willie, but there is just no spot for you here right now. If I had a spot for you, I'd slam you right in, but I don't have a single solitary spot. He looks at his lighter. Willie has picked it up and gives it to him. Pause. Willie, with increasing anger. Howard, all I need to set my table is $50 a week. Howard, but where am I going to put you, kid? Willie, look, it isn't a question of whether I can sell merchandise, is it? Howard, no, but it's a business, kid, and everybody's got to pull his own weight. Willie, desperately, just let me tell you a story, Howard. Uh, Howard, just because you got to admit, business is business. Willie, angrily, business is definitely business, but just listen for a minute. You don't understand this. When I was a boy, 18, 19, I was already on the road, and there was a question in my mind of whether I had to sell in the future. Because in those days, I had a yearning to go to Alaska, see? There was three gold strikes in one mountain in Alaska, and I felt like I was going out just for the ride, you might say. Howard, barely interested, don't say. Willie, oh yeah, my father lived many years in Alaska. He was an adventurous man. We got quite a little streak of self-reliance in our family. I thought I'd go out with my older brother and try to locate him and maybe settle in the north with the old man. I was almost decided to go when I met a salesman in the Parker house. His name was Dave Singleman, and he was 48 years old, and he drummed up merchandise in the 31 states. And old Dave, he'd go up to his room, you understand, put on his green velvet slippers, and I'll never forget him pick up his phone and call the buyers, and without ever leaving his home at the age of 84, he made a living. And when I saw that, I realized selling was the greatest career a man could want. Because what could be more satisfying than able to go at the age of 84 or 83 into different, in 30 different cities, pick up a phone, be remembered and loved and helped by so many different people, you know? When he died, and by the way, he died the death of a salesman in his green velvet slippers in the smoker of a New York, New Haven, Hartford, going into Boston when he died. Hundreds of salesmen and buyers were at his funeral. Things were sad out on a lot of trains for months after that. He stands up. Howard has not looked at him. In those days, there was a personality in it. Howard, there was respect and camaraderie and gratitude in it. Today, it's all cut and dried and there's no chance of for bringing friendship and or bare personality. You see what I mean? They don't know him anymore. Howard, moving away to the right. That's just one thing, Willie. Willie, uh, if I had $40 a week, that'd be all I need. $40, Howard. Howard, kid, I can't take blood from a stone. I, Willie, desperately. Desperation is on his chin now. Howard, the year Al Smith was nominated, your father came to me and Howard starting to go off. I, I see you got some people, kid. Willie stopping him. I'm talking about your father. These were promises made across this desk. You mustn't tell me you've got people to see. I put 34 years into this firm, Howard, and from what I and I can't pay my insurance. You can't eat an orange and throw the peel away. A man is not a piece of fruit after a pause. Now pay attention. Your father in 1928 had I had a big year. I averaged $170 a week in commission. Howard, impatiently. Now, Willie, you never average. Willie, banging his head on the desk. I averaged $170 a week in the year of 1928, and your father came to me, or rather, I was in this office here. It was right over this desk, and he put his hand on my shoulder. Howard, getting up. You'll have to excuse me, Willie. I gotta see some people. Pull yourself together, going out. I'll be back in a little while. On Howard's exit, the light on his chair grows very bright and strange. On Howard's exit... The light on his chair grows very bright and strange. Willie, pull myself together. Why the hell? What the hell did I say to him? My God, I was yelling at him. How could I? Willie breaks off, starting at the light, which occupies the chair, animating it. He approaches his chair, standing across the desk from it. Frank, Frank, don't you remember what you told me that time? How you put your hand on my shoulder and Frank... He leans on his desk and he speaks the dead man's name. He accidentally switches on the recorder and instantly... Howard's son. Of New York is Albany, the capital of Ohio, Cincinnati, the capital of Rhode Island is... The rec um, recitation continues. Mm -hmm. Willie, leaping away with fright, shouting at, Ha! Howard! Howard! Howard rushing in what happened. Willie, pointing at the machine, which continues nasally, childishly with the capital city. Shut it off! Shut it off! 
Howard pulling the plug out. Look, Willie. Willie pressing his hands to his eyes. I gotta get myself some coffee. I'll get some coffee. Willie starts to walk out. Howard stops to him. Howard rolling up the cord. Willie, look. Willie, I'll go to Boston. Willie, can't go to Boston for us. Willie, why can't I go? Howard, well, I don't want you to represent us. I've been meaning to tell you that for a long time now. Howard, you're firing me? Howard, I I think you'll need a good long rest, Willie. Willie, Howard. Howard, and when you feel better, come back and we'll see if we can work something out. Willie, but I gotta earn money, Howard. I'm in no position to. Howard, where are your sons? Why don't your sons give you a hand? Willie, they're working on a very big deal. Howard, this is no time for false pride, Willie. You've got your sons. Tell them they are tired. You've got two great boys, haven't you? Willie, oh, no question, no question. But in the meantime, Howard, then that's all that, huh? Willie, all right, I'll go to Boston tomorrow. Howard, no, no. Willie, I can't throw myself on my sons. I'm not a cripple. Look, kid, I'm busy this morning. Willie, grabbing Howard's arm. Howard, you've got to let me go to Boston. Howard... Hard, keeping himself under control. I've got a line of people to see this morning. Sit down, take five minutes, and pull yourself together. And then go home, will ya? I need the office. Willie. He starts to go. Turns, remembering the recorder. Starts to push off the table, holding the recorder. Oh, yeah. Whenever you can this week, stop by and drop off the samples. You'll feel better. Willie, and then come back and we'll talk. Pull yourself together, kid. There's people outside. Howard exits the table off left. Willie stares at space, exhausted. Now the music is heard. Ben's music. First distantly, then closer. Closer. As Willie speaks, Ben enters from the distance. He carries valise and umbrella. Willie. Oh, Ben. How'd you do it? What is the answer? Did your wind... Did you wind up the Alaska deal already? Ben. Doesn't take much time if you know what you're doing. Just a short business trip. Boarding ship in an hour. Wanted to say goodbye. Willie, Ben, I've got to talk to you. Uh, ben, glancing at his watch. Having the time, William. Willie, crossing the apron at, uh, to Ben. Ben, nothing's working out. I don't know what to do. Ben, now look here, William. I've got Timberland in Alaska, and I need a man to look after things for me. God, Timberland? Me and my boys in those great outdoors. Uh, ben, you've got a continent in your doorstep, William. Get out these cities. They're full of they're full of talk and time payments and courts of law. Screw up your fists. You can have a fight. Fortune up there. Well, yes, yes, Linda, Linda. Linda enters as of old with the watch. Linda, oh, you're back. Ben, I haven't much time. Willie, no, wait. Linda, he's got a proposition for me in Alaska. Linda, but you've got to, to Ben. He's got a beautiful job here. Willie, but in Alaska, kid, I could. Linda, you're doing well enough, Willie. Ben, to Linda. Enough for what, my dear? Linda, frightened of Ben and angry at him. Don't say those things to him, even to be happy right here, right now, to Willie. All while he laughs. Why must everybody conquer the world? You're well liked and the boys love you, and someday to Ben, why, old man, Wagner told him the other day that if he keeps it up, he'll be a member of the firm, didn't he, Willie? Willie. Sure, sure, I'm building something within the firm, Ben. And this man building is something he must be on the right track, mustn't he? Ben, why are you building? Lay your hand on it. Where is it? Well, he hasn't lead. That's true, Linda. There's nothing. Linda, why? It's Ben. There's a man 84 years old. Well, that's right, Ben. That's right. When I look at that man, I say, what is there to worry about? Ben, bah. Willie, it's true, Ben. All he has to do is go into any city, pick up the phone, and he's making his living. You know why? Ben, picking up the, his valise. I gotta go. Willie holding Ben back. Look at this boy. Biff in his high school sweater enters carrying suitcase. Happy Biff shoulders, guards, gold helmet, football pants. Willie, without a penny to his name, three great universities are begging for him, and there's nothing the sky's the limit, because it's not what you do, Ben. It's who knows you and the smile on your face. It's context, Ben, context. The whole wealth of Alaska passes over the lunch table at the Common Door Hotel, and that's the wonder of the country in this country. The man can end up with diamonds here on the basis of being liked. He can turn, he can end with diamonds too, because that's what you get on the field today. It's important because thousands of people will get to the rooting of for you and loving you. To Ben, 
who has again begun to leave, and Ben, when he walks into business office, his name will sound like a bell and walk in the doors all the time. I've seen it, Ben. I've seen it thousands of times. You can't feel it but with your hands like timber, but it's there. Ben, good boy, William. Willie, Ben, am I right? Don't you think I am right? I value advice. Ben, there's a new continent at your doorstep, William. You could walk out rich. Rich, he's gone. Willie, we'll do it here, Ben. You hear me? We're going to do it here. Young Bernard rushes in. The gay music of the boys is heard. Bernard, oh gee, I was afraid you left already. Willie, why, what time is it, Ben? It's half past one. Willie, well, come on, everybody. Ebbets Field, next stop. Where is the pendants? He rushes to the half wall line of the kitchen and runs out to the living room. Linda, to Biff, did you pack the fresh underwear? Biff, who has been limbering up. I want to go. Biff, Bernard, Biff, I'm carrying your helmet. Aren't I happy? No, I'm carrying the helmet. Bernard, oh, Biff, you promised me. Happy, I'm carrying the helmet. Bernard, how am I gonna get this in the locker room? Linda, help him carry the shoulder guard. She put her coat and hat. Bernard, can I, Biff? Because I told everybody I'm going to be in the locker room. Happy in Ebbets Field, it's the clubhouse. Bernard, I meant the clubhouse, Biff. Happy, Biff. Biff grants, uh, gradually after a slight pause. Let him carry the shoulders off. Happy, as he gives Bernard the shoulder guards, stay close to us now. Willie rushes in with a penance. Willie handing them out, everyone is to wave when Biff comes out in the field. Happy and Bernard run off. You set now, boy. The music has died away. Biff, ready to go, Pop. Every muscle is ready. Willie at the edge of the apron. You realize what this means. Biff, that's right, Pop. Willie, feeling Biff muscles, you're coming home this afternoon, captain of the All Scholastics Championship team of the City of New York. Biff, I got it, Pop, and remember, pal, when I take off my helmet, that touchdown is for you. Willie, let's go. He is starting out with his arms around Biff. When Charlie enters as old and knickers, I have no room for you, Charlie. Charlie, and room what for what? Willie, in the car. You're going for a ride? I wanted to shoot some c casino. Willie, furiously, casino, incredulously. Oh, don't you realize what today is? Oh, he knows, Willie. He's just kidding you. Uh, Willie, that's... Uh, that's nothing to kid about. No, Linda, what's going on? Linda, he is playing in Ebbets Field. Charlie, baseball? In this weather? Don't talk to him. Come on, come on. He is pushing them out. Charlie, wait a minute. Didn't you hear the news? Willie, what? Charlie, don't you listen to the radio? Ebbets Field just blew up. Willie, you, you go to hell, Charlie laughs, pushing them out as they go on. Knock a homer, Biff, knock a homer. William, the last to leave, turning to Charlie. I don't think that was funny, Charlie. This is the greatest day of my life. Uh, Charlie, Willie, when are you going to grow up? Uh, Willie, hey, <laughs> hey. When this game is over, Charlie, you'll be laughing out of the other side of your face. They'll be calling him from another red grunge. 25000 a year. Charlie, kidding. Is that so? Willie, yeah, that's so. Charlie, well, then I'm sorry, Willie, but let me tell you something. Willie, what? Who is Red Grange? Willie, put up your hands. God damn you, put up your hands. Charlie, chuckling, shakes his head and walks away around the left corner of the stage. Willie, following him, the music rises to a mocking frenzy. Willie, what the hell do you think you are? Better than everybody else? Don't you know anything, you big ignorant pid? Put up your hands. Light rises onto the side of the forest stage in a small table in the reception room of Charlie's office. The traffic sounds are heard. Bernard, now mature, sits whistling to himself. A pair of tennis rackets and an overnight bag are on the floor beside him. Willie, off stage. What are you talking about for? Uh, don't walk away, don't walk away. If you're going to say something, say it to my face. I know you laugh at me behind my back. You'll laugh out the other side of your goddamn face after this one. Touchdown, touchdown. 80,000 people, touchdown. Right between the goalposts. Bernard is quiet and earnest, but a self-assured young man. Willie's voice is coming from upstage right now. Bernard lowers his feet off the table and listens. Jenny, his father, secretary, enters. Jenny, distressed. Bernard, say, will you go out into the hall? Bernard, what is that noise? Who is it? J uh, Jenny, Mr. Loman, he just got off the elevator. Bernard, getting up. Who is he arguing with? Jenny, nobody. There's nobody with him. I can't deal with him anymore, and your father gets upset all the time. Every time he comes, uh, I've got a lot of typing to do. Your father's waiting to sign it. Will you see it? Willie, entering. Touchdown. Touch. He sees Jenny. Jenny, Jenny, good to see you. How are you? Working or still honest? Jenny, fine. How have you been? Willie, not much anymore, Jenny. Ha ha. He is surprised to see the rackets. Bernard, well, hello, Uncle Willie. Willie, almost shocked. Bernard, Lua Luke is here. He comes quickly, guiltily, to Bernard, and warmly shakes his hand. 
Willie, what are you doing here? Bernard, oh, just stop to see Pop. Get off my feet till the train leaves. I'm going to see Washington in a few minutes. Willie, is he in? Bernard, yes, he's in his office with the accountant. Sit down. Willie, sitting down. What are you doing to do in Washington? Bernard, oh, I, just a case I got here, Willie. Willie, is that so? The indicating the rackets you play tennis there? Bernard, I'm staying with a friend who's got a court. Uh, Willie, don't say. His own tennis court must be fine. People, I bet. Uh, Bernard, they're very nice. Uh, Dad, that tells me, uh, Biff's in town. Willie, with a big smile, yes, Biff's in. Working on a very big deal, Bernard. Bernard, what's Biff doing? Well, he's been doing very big things in the West, but he's decided to establish himself here. Very big, big dinner. Uh, did I hear your wife had a boy? Bernard, that's right, our second. Willie, two boys, what do you do now? Bernard, oh, what kind of deal has Biff got? Hmm? Well, well, Biff, uh, Oliver is, uh... Well, Bill Oliver is very a big sporting goods man, and he wants Biff very badly. Called him up from the West, long distance, carte blanche, and uh, special deliveries. Your father has their own private tennis court. Yeah, uh, Bernard, you still with the old firm, Willie? Uh, Willie, after a pause, well, I'm overjoyed to see how you made the grid, Bernard. Overjoyed. It's encouraging to see a young man really, really uh, look very good for Biff. Very. Uh, he breaks off then. Uh, Bernard, he's so full of emotion. He breaks off again. Bernard, what is it, Willie? Willie, small and alone, what's the secret? Bernard, what secret? Uh, how? How did you? Why didn't you ever catch on? Bernard, I wouldn't know why that, Willie. Willie, confidently, desperately, you were his friend, his boyhood friend. There's something about him I don't understand about it. His life ended after that Ebbets Field game. From the age of 17, nothing's good ever happened to him. Bernard, he never trained himself for anything. Willie, but he did. He did. After high school, he took on so many correspondent courses. Radio, mechanics, television, God knows what, and he never made the slightest mark. Bernard taking off his glasses. Willie, don't you want to talk candidly? Willie, rising. Bernard faces. I regard you as a very brilliant man, Bernard. I value your advice. Oh, the hell with my, the advice, Willie. I couldn't ask. I couldn't advise you. There was one thing I've always wanted to ask you. When he was supposed to graduate and the math teacher flunked him, Willie, oh God, that son of a bitch ruined his life. Bernard, yes, but Willie, all he had to do was go to summer school and make up that subject. Uh, Willie, that's right, that's right. Why did you, did you tell him to not go to summer school? Me? I begged him to go. I ordered him to go. Willie, then why didn't he go? Why? Why? That Bernard question is failing me uh, like a ghost for the last 15 years. He flunked the subject and laid down and died like a hammer hit him. Bernard, take it easy, kid. Willie, let me talk to you. I've got nobody to talk to. Bernard, Bernard, was it my fault? You see, I, it keeps going around in my mind. I Maybe I did something to him. I've got nothing to give him. Bernard, don't take it so hard. Willie, will he lay down? What's the story here? You were his friend. Willie, I flunked him in June. It was our grades that came out, and he flunked math. Willie, that son of a bitch. Bernard, no, it was right then. Biff just got very angry. I remember he was supposed to enroll in summer school. Willie, surprised he was. Bernard, he wasn't beaten by it at all. But then Willie got disappeared from the block about a month, and I got the idea that he came up to New England to see you. Willie stares in silence. Bernard, Willie. Willie, with a strong edge of of resentment in his voice. Yeah, he came to Boston. What about it? Bernard, well, it just seems that he came back. I'll never forget this, and it just always mystifies me because I thought so well of Biff, even though he's always taken such advantage of me. I loved him, Willie, you know, and when he came back after that month and took his sneakers, remember those sneakers the University of Virginia printed on them? He was so proud of those, wore them every day. He took them down in the cellar, and then at least half an hour, just the two of us punching each other down in the cellar, crying right through it. I've often got how strange it was that I knew he'd given up his life. What happened in Boston, Willie? Willie, looks him as an intruder. Bernard, I just brought this up because you asked me. Willie, angrily, nothing. What do you mean? What happened? What has what this got to do with anything? Bernard, well, don't get sore. Willie, what are you trying to do? Blame it on me? If a boy lays down, is that my fault, Bernard? Now, Willie, don't get Willie. Don't get talk to me that way. What does that mean? What happened? Charlie enters. He is in his vest and carries a bottle of bourbon. Charlie, hey, you're going to miss that train. He waves the bottle. Uh, Bernard, yes, I'm going off. He waves the bottle. Thanks, pup. He picks his rackets and bag. Goodbye, Willie, and don't worry about it. You know, if at first you don't succeed... Willie, yes, I believe in that, Bernard. But sometimes, Willie, it's better for a man to just walk away. Willie, walk away? Bernard, that's right. Willie, but you can't walk away. 
Uh, Bernard, after a slight pause, I guess it's when it's tough. Extending his hand. Goodbye, Willie. Willie is shaking Bernard's hand. Goodbye, boy. Charlie, an arm of Bernard's shoulder. How do you like this, kid? Gonna argue a case in front of the Supreme Court. Bernard, protesting. Pop. Willie, genuinely shocked, pained, and happy. No, the Supreme Court. Uh, I gotta run. Bye, Dad. Charlie, knock him dead, Bernard. Bernard goes off. Willie and Charlie take out his wallet. The Supreme Court, and he didn't even have to mention it. Charlie, uh, counting money on the dates. Uh, he don't have to. He's gonna do it. Willie, and you never told him what to do, did you? Never took any interest in him. Charlie. Uh, my salvation is that I never took any interest in anything. There's some money, $50. I got an account. I got an accountant inside. Charlie, look, uh, with difficulty, I got my insurance to pay. If you can imagine, I need $110. Charlie doesn't reply for a moment, merely stops moving. Willie, I draw it from my bank, but Linda would know, and I... Charlie, sit down, Willie. Moving towards the chair and keeping an account of everything, remember, I'll pay every penny back, he sits. Now listen to me, Willie. Charlie, I want you to know I appreciate Charlie sitting down on the table. Willie, what are you doing? What the hell is going on in your head? Willie, why? I'm simply... I offered you a job. You can make $50 a week. I won't send you on the road. Willie, I've got a job. Charlie, without pay. What kind of job is a job without pay? He rises. Now look, it. enough is enough. I'm no genius, but I know when I'm being insulted. Willie, insulted? Charlie, why don't you want me to work for you? Willie, what's the matter with you? I've got a job. Charlie, then what are you talking about when you walk in here every week? Willie, getting up. Well, if you don't want me to walk in here... Charlie, I'm offering you a job. Willie, I don't want a job, God damn it. Charlie, when the hell are you going to grow up? Willie, furiously, you big ignoramus. You say that to me again, I'll wrap you one. I don't care how big you are. He's ready to fight. Pause. Charlie, kindly going to him. How much do you need, Willie? Willie, Charlie, I'm strapped. I'm strapped. I, I, I don't know what to do. I was just fired. Charlie, Howard, fire you? That snot nose. Imagine that. I named him. I named him Howard. Charlie, Willie, when are you going to realize that them things don't mean anything? You named him Howard, but you can't sell that. The only thing you got in this world is to sell, and you're a salesman, and you know that. Willie, I've always tried to think otherwise, I guess. I've always felt that if a man was impressive and, you know, like that, nothing, and uh, I, you know. Charlie, why must everybody like you? Who liked J.P. Morgan? Was he impressive? In a Turkish bath, he looked like a butcher. With his pockets on, he was very loud lights. Now, listen, Willie. I know you don't like me, and nobody can say that I'm in love with you, but I'll give you a job, because just for the hell of it, uh, I'll put them that way. Now, what do you say, Willie? I, I, I just can't work for you, Charlie. Charlie, what are you, jealous of me? Willie, I can't work for you, that's all. Don't ask me why. Charlie, anger takes out more bills. You've been jealous of me all your life. Sorry. Um, you've been me all your life. I'll, I got some work to do. Uh, take care of yourself. Pay your insurance. Willie, moving to the right. Funny, you know, after all the highways and trains and appointments and after years, you end up worth more dead than alive. Charlie, Willie, nobody's worth nothing dead after a slight pause. Did you hear what I said? Willie still stands dreaming. Charlie, Willie! Willie, apologize to Bernard for me when you see him. I, I didn't mean to argue with him. He's a fine boy. They're all fine boys. They all end up with... Big all of them. Someday they'll all play tennis together. Wish me luck, Charlie. He saw Bill Oliver today. Charlie, good luck. Willie on the verge of tears. Charlie, you're the only friend I've got. Isn't that a remarkable thing? He goes out. Charlie, Jesus. Charlie stares at him for a moment and follows. The light uh, blacks out. Suddenly, rock, ruckus music is heard, and a red glow rises behind the screen at night. Stanley, a young waiter appears, carrying a table, followed by Happy, who is carrying two chairs. Stanley, putting himself down. That's all right, Mr. Loman. I can handle it myself. He turns and takes the chairs from Happy and places them at the table. Happy, glancing around. Oh, this is the better. Stanley, I was sure in the front when you go in the middle, uh, it tells me all kind of noise. Whenever you've got a party, Mr. Loman, you just tell me and I'll put you back in, you know, because there's a lot of people who don't who don't like it in private because when they go out, they see a lot of action around them and because they're sick and tired and stay in the house by themselves. Uh, but I know you know, you ain't you know, from Hackensack. You know what I mean? Happy sitting down. So how's it coming, Stanley? Stanley, ah, it's a big dog's life. I only remember during the war they took me in the army. I could have been dead by now. 
Happy, my brother's dead, Stanley. Stanley, oh, he come back, half from the far west. Happy, yeah, big cattle man, too, my brother, so treat him right. Stanley, oh, your father, too, happy. You got a couple of nice lobsters, Stanley. Hundred percent, big, hand, uh, happy. I want them with the claws. Stanley, don't worry, I'll give you no mice. Happy laughs. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, how about some wine? I'll put, I'll put a head on the meal. Happy, no, you remember, Stanley, that recipe I bought you from overseas with the champagne on it? Stanley, oh yes, I sure got it. It's tracked up in the yet in the kitchen, but that'll cost a buck a piece anyways. Happy, that's all right. Stanley, what did you hit a number on something? Uh, happy, no, it's a little celebration. My brother is, I think he's uh, pulled off a big deal today. I think we're going into business together. Stanley, great. That's the best for you. I got a family. Because a family business, you know what I mean? Ah, that's the best. That's what I said, Stanley, because what's the difference? Somebody steals, it's in the family, you know what I mean? Sotto voce. It's like this bartender here. This boss is going crazy. What kind of leak he's got on the cash register? You put it in, but it don't come out. Happy, raising his head. Shh, Stanley. What? Happy, you noticed I wasn't looking right or left, was I? Stanley, no. Happy, and my eyes are closed. Stanley, so what's the happy? Strudel's coming. Stanley, catching on, looks around. Ah, there's no. He breaks off a uh, fur. Lavishly dressed girl enters and sits at the next table. Both follow her with their eyes. Stanley, jeez, how'd you know? Happy, I got a radar or something staring directly at her profile. Ooh, Stanley. Stanley, I think that's for you, Mr. Loman. Uh, happy, look at that mouth. Oh, God, and the binoculars. Stanley, jeez, you got a life, Mr. Loam, and happy. Wait on her. Stanley, go into the girl's table. Would you like a menu, ma'am? Girl, I am expecting someone, but I'd like a happy. Why don't you bring her? Excuse me, miss, do you mind? I sell champagne, and I'd like you to try my brand. Bring her a champagne, Stanley. Girl, that's awfully nice of you. Happy, don't mention it. It's all company money. He laughs. Ha ha. Girl, that's a charming product to be selling, isn't it? Happy, oh, you know, it gets to be like everything else. Selling is selling, you know. Girl, I suppose. Happy, you don't happen to sell, do you? Girl, no, I don't sell. Happy, would you, uh... Object to a compliment from a stranger? You ought to be looking at on a magazine cover. Oh, you dog. Uh, girl looking at him a little archly. I have been. Stanley comes with a glass of champagne. Happy. What did I say before, Stanley? You see, she's a cover girl. Stanley. Oh, I could see. I could see. Happy to the girl. What magazine? Girl, oh, a lot of them. She takes the drink. Thank you. Happy. You know what they say in France, don't you? Champagne is the drink of the complexion. Hiya, Biff. Biff has entered and sits with Happy. Biff, hello, kid. Sorry I'm late. Happy, I just got here. Uh, Miss, uh, girl, Forsyth. Happy, Miss Forsyth. This is my brother. Biff, is that here? Happy, his name is Biff. You might have heard of him. Great football player. Girl, really, what team? Happy, are you familiar with football? Girl, no, I'm afraid I'm not. Happy, Biff is a quarterback with the New York Giants. Girl, well, isn't that nice? She drinks. Happy, good health, girl. I'm happy to meet you. Happy, this is this is that. That's my name, Hap. Uh, it's really Harold, but at the West Point they call me Happy. Girl, now really impressed. Oh, I see. How do you do? She turns her profile. Biff, isn't Dad coming? Happy, you want her? Biff, oh, I can never make that. Happy, oh, I remember the time when I would come into your head. What's the old confidence, Biff? Biff, I just saw Oliver. Happy, wait a minute. I've got to see that old confidence again. Do you want her? She's on call. Biff, oh no. She turns and looks at the girl. Happy, I'm telling you, watch this. Turning to the girl. Honey, she turns to him. Are you busy? Girl, well, I am, but I could make a phone call. Happy, do that, will you, honey? And see if you can get a friend. Uh, we'll be here uh, for a while. Biff is one of the greatest football players in the country. Girl, standing up. Well, I'm certainly happy to meet you. Happy, come back soon. Girl, I'll try. Happy, don't, don't try. Honest, try hard. The girl exits, Stanley Files shaking his head in bewildered admiration. Happy, isn't that a shame now? A beautiful girl like that. That's what I that's why I can't get married. There's no good woman in a thousand. York is loaded with them, kid. Biff, hap, look, happy, I told you she was on call. Biff, strangely unnerved. Cut it out, Willie. I, I want her to say something to you. Happy. Ooh, did you see Oliver? Biff, I saw him all right. Now look, I want you to tell Daddy a couple of things. And I want you to uh to help me. 
Biff, what is it? Is he's going crazy to back you, Biff? You crazy? You're out of your goddamn mind. You know that. Happy? Why? What happened, Biff? Rathlessly, I did a terrible thing today, Happy. I swear it's been the strangest day. I ever went through. A, I'm all numb. I swear. Happy? You mean he wouldn't see you, Buff? Biff? Well, I waited six hours to see him all day. Kept sending him my name and even tried to date his secretary so she'd get me to to him, but no soap. Happy? Well, because you're not showing the old confidence, Biff. He remembered you, didn't he? Biff, stopping happy with a gesture. Finally, about five o'clock, he comes out. I don't remember who I was or anything, but I felt like such an idiot, Hap. Happy, did you tell, see him, did you tell him my Florida idea? Biff, he walked away. I saw him for one minute. I got so mad I could have sworn I could have torn the walls down. How the hell did I ever get such an idea? I was a salesman there. I never believed myself that I'd be a salesman for him. And one, he gave me the look, and I realized what a ridiculous lie my whole life has been. We've been talking in a dream for 15 years. Uh, I was a shipping clerk. Happy, what'd you do? Biff, with great tension and wonder. Well, he left, see, and uh, the secretary went out, and I was all alone in the living room, and I don't remember what came over me, Hap. The next thing I know is I'm in the office. Paneled walls, everything, I can explain it. Hap, I just, I took his fountain pens. Happy, jeez, did he catch you? Biff, I ran out. I ran all down 11 flights. I ran, I ran, I ran. Happy, well, that was an awful dumb. What'd you do that for? Biff. Agonized. I don't know. It just... I wanted to make something. I don't know. You gotta help me, Hap. I'm gonna tell Pop. Excuse me. Hap, you crazy? What for? Biff. Hap, he's gotta understand that I'm not the man somebody lends that kind of money to. He thinks I've been spitting on him all these years and it's eating him up. Happy, that's just it. You gotta tell him something nice. Biff, I can't. Happy, say you got lunch date uh, with Oliver tomorrow. Biff, so what do I do tomorrow? Happy, you leave the house tomorrow and come back at night and Oliver is uh, thinking it over. And when he's thinking it over for a couple weeks and gradually it fades away and nobody's the worst. Biff, but I'll go on forever. Happy, Biff, that is never happy. And when he's looking forward to something. Willie enters. Happy. Hello, Scout. Willie. Gee, I haven't been here in years. Stanley has followed Willie in such a chair for him. Stanley starts off, and Happy stops him. Happy. Stanley. Stanley stands by, waiting for an order. Biff, going to Willie with guilt and uh, see an invalid. Uh, sit down, Pop. Willie, you want a drink? Willie, sure. I don't mind. Billy, let's get a load on. Willie, you look worried. Biff, no, no, no. It's a Stanley. It's scotch all around. Make it doubles. Stanley. Doubles, right. He goes. Willie, you just had a couple already, didn't you? Biff, well, just a couple, yeah. What happened, boy? Nodding uh, firmly with a smile. Everything go all right? Biff takes a breath and then reaches out and grabs Willie's head. Pa, pal. He smiles bravely and Willie is smiling too. I had an experience today. Happy. Terrific, Pop. Willie, is that so? What happened? <coughs> Biff, slightly alcoholic above the earth. I am going to tell you everything from first to last. It's been a strange day. Silence. He looks around, composes himself as the best he can, but his breath keeps t breaking the rhythm of his voice. I had to wait quite a while for him. And Willie. Oliver? Biff. Yeah, Oliver. His day is a cold matter of fact. A lot of instances, facts, pops, facts about his life came back to me. Who was it, Pop? Whoever said I was a salesman with Oliver? Willie. Well, you were. Biff. No, Dad. I was a shipping clerk. Willie, but you were practically... <clears throat> Biff with determination. Dad, I don't know who said it first, but I was never a salesman for Bill Oliver. Willie, what are you talking about? Uh, Biff, let's hold on to the facts tonight, Pop. We're not going to get anywhere bowling around. I was a shipping clerk. Willie, angrily. All right, now listen to me. Biff, why don't you let me finish? Willie, I'm not interested in stories about the past or kind of crap or anything, because the woods are burning, boys. You understand there's a big blaze going on all around. I was fired today. Biff, shocked. How could you be? Willie, I was fired because I'm looking for a little good news to tell your mother because the woman is waiting and the waiting woman has suffered. The gist of it is I haven't got a story left in my head, Biff, so don't give me a lecture about facts and aspects. I'm not interested. Now, what do you got to say to me? Stanley enters into three drinks. They wait until he leaves. Willie, did you see Oliver? Biff, Jesus, Dad. Willie, you mean he didn't go up there? Happy, yo, he sure went up there. Biff, I did, I saw him. How could they fire you? Willie, on the edge of his chair, what kind of welcome did he give you? Biff, uh, he won't even let you work on commission? Willie, I'm out driving. 
So tell me, what do you you give you gave a warm welcome, happy, sure, pop, sure. Biff driven. Well, it was kind of Willie. Well, I was wondering if you'd remember you to happy. Imagine a man doesn't see him for ten years, twelve years, and give him that kind of a welcome. Happy, damn right. Biff is trying to return the offensive. Pop, look, Willie, you don't know what he remembered, do you? Because you impressed him in those days. Biff, let's talk quietly and get down to the facts, huh? Willie, as though Biff had seen him interrupting. Well, what happened? The great news, Biff. Did he take you into his office or did you walk away into the living room? Well, he came in, see, and Willie with a big smile. What do you say? Put you through his arm around you. Biff, well, he kind of will. He's a fine man to have. He's a very hard man to see, you know. Uh, happy agreeing. Oh, I know, Willie, to Biff. Is that where you had the drinks, Biff? Yeah, he gave me a couple of... Oh, no, no. Happy, cutting in. He told me... To, he told him my Florida idea. Willie, don't interrupt to Biff. How do you react to the Florida idea? Biff, Dad, do you mind giving me a minute to explain? Willie, I've been waiting for you to explain since I sat down here. What happened? He took you into his office and what? Well, I talked and he listened, see, and the famous, you know... Willie, famous for the the way he listens, you know. What was his answer, Biff? His answer was, he breaks off so clearly angrily, that you're not going to let me tell you, not letting me tell you what I want to tell you. Willingly, Willie, accusing, angered. You didn't see him, did you? Biff, I did see him. Willie, would you insult him or something? You insulted him, didn't you? Biff, listen, would you just let me out of it? Would you just let me out of it? Happy, what the hell? Willie, tell me what happened. Biff, to Happy, I can't talk to him. Single trumpet note jars the ears. A light of green leaves stains the house which holds the air. Might dream. Young Bernard enters and knocks on the door of the house. Young Bernard, frantically. Mrs. Lohman, Mrs. Lohman, happy. Tell him what happened. Biff to happy. Shut up and leave me alone, Willie. No, no, no. You have to go out and flunk math. Biff, what math? What are you talking about? Young Bernardi. Mrs. Lohman, Miss Lohman. Linda appears in the house, says of old, Willie, wildly, math, 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 Biff, take it easy, Pop, young Bernard, and Mrs. Loman, Willie, furiously, if you haven't flunked, you'd be set by now, Biff, uh, look, tell me what happened, and you're going to listen to me. Young Bernard, Mrs. Loman, Biff, I waited six hours, happy, what the hell are you doing, Biff, I kept sending them the name, but he wouldn't let me see him, so finally, he continues, and on her light is fade away, young Bernard, Bill flunked math, Linda, no, um, Young Bernard, Burn Bomb flunked him. They won't let him graduate. Linda, they, but they have to. He's got to go to the university. Where is he? Biff, Biff, Young Bernard. No, he left. He went to the Grand Central. Linda, Grant, you mean he went to Boston? Young Bernard, is Uncle Willie in Boston? Oh, maybe Willie can talk to the teacher. Oh, poor, poor boy. Light on the house. Snaps out. Biff is at the table. Now audible. Holding up a gold fountain pen. Now I'm washed over with Oliver. You understand? You listening to me? Willie at the last. Yeah, sure. If you haven't flunked. Biff flunked what? What are you talking about, Willie? Don't blame everything on me. I didn't flunk math. You did. What pen? Happy. That was awful dumb. Biff, a pen like that is worth. Willie, seeing the pen for the first time. You took Oliver's pen? Biff, weakening. Dad, I just explained it to you. Biff, you stole Bill Oliver's fountain pen. Biff, I didn't exactly steal it. That's just what I've been explaining to you. Happy, he had it in his hand, and just uh, and then Oliver walked in. He got so nervous and stuffed it in his pocket. Willie, my God, Bill, uh, Biff, I never intended to do it, Dad. Operator's voice, Standish Arms, good evening, Willie, shouting, I'm not in my room. Biff, frightened, Dad, what's the matter? And he and Happy stand up. Operator, ringing Mr. Loman for you. Willie, I'm not there. Stop it. Biff, horrified, gets down on one knee before Willie. Dad, I'll make good. I'll make good. Willie tries to get to his feet. Willie holds him down. Sit down, Willie. No, you're no good. You're no good for anything. Biff, I am, Dad. I'll find something else. You understand now. Don't worry about anything. He holds up to Willie's face. Talk to me, Dad. Operator. Mr. Loma does not answer. Shall I page him? Willie attempting to stand, although to rush him to silence. The operator. No, no, no. Happy. He'll strike something, Pop. Willie, no, no, no. Biff, desperately standing over Willie. Pop, listen to me. I'm telling you something good. I'll ever talk to his partner about Florida. You're listening? He talked to his partner. And he came to me. I'm going to be all right, you hear? Dad, listen to me. He just said it was going to be a question of the amount. Willie, then you got it? Happy. He's going to be terrific, Pop. Willie, trying to stand. Then you've got it, haven't you? You've got it. You've got it. He's... Ah, uh, shit. Um, Biff, agonized. Hold Willie down. No, look, Pop. I'm supposed to have lunch with them tomorrow. I'm just telling you this so I can make good that I can have an impression by uh, Pop and I'll make good somewhere, but I can't go tomorrow. 
Let's see. Willie, why not? You simply biff. But the pen, Pop. Willie, you gave it to him and tell him it was oversight. Willie, uh, uh, sure, have lunch tomorrow. Biff, I can't say that. Willie, you were going to a crossword puzzle and accidentally used his pen? Biff, listen, kid, I took those balls years ago, and now I can't walk in with this fountain hen. That clinches it, don't you see? I can't face him like that. I'll try something else. Page's voice paging, Mr. Loman. Willie, don't you want to go? Don't you want to be anything? Biff, Pop, how can I go back? Willie, don't you want to be anything? It's that's what's hit it. Biff, now angry at Willie for not crediting his sympathy. Don't take that away. You think that was easy walking into an office after what I've done to him? A team of forces couldn't have dragged me back to Oliver. Really, then why'd you go, Biff? Why'd I go? Why'd I go? Look at you. Look at you. Look what's becoming of you. Off left, the woman laughs. Willie, uh, Biff, you're going to have to go to the lunch appointment tomorrow. Or, Biff, I can't go. I've got an appointment. Happy. Biff, for Willie. What are you, sp are you spitting at me? Biff, don't take it that way, goddammit. Willie strikes Biff and falters away from the table. You rotten little louse. Why are you spitting at me? The woman, someone's at the door, will you? Biff, I'm no good. Can't you see what I am? Happy separating them. Hey, you're in our restaurant. Now cut it out, both of you. The girl enters. Hello, girls. Sit down. The woman laughs off left. Miss Forsyth, I guess we might as well. This is Letta. The woman, Willie, are you going to wake up? Biff, ignoring Willie. How are you? Miss, sit down. What do you drink? Miss Forsyth, let him I not be able to say long. Let I gotta get up very early tomorrow. I got jury duty. I'm so excited. You ever, what are you fellows ever on a jury? Biff, no, but I've been in front of them. <laughs> the girl laughs. This is my father. Letta, isn't he cute? Sit us with us, Pop. Happy. Sit down, Bill. Biff, going to him. Come on, slugger. Drink us onto the table. To hell with it. Come on, sit down. On Biff's last instance, Willie's about to sit. The woman now urgently. Willie, are you going to answer the door? The woman's call pulls Willie back. He starts right befuddled. Hey, where are you going? Willie, open the door. Biff, the door. Willie, the washroom. The door. Where's the door? Biff, leaning Willie to the left. Just go straight down. Willie moves left. The woman, Willie, Willie, are you going to get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up? Ah. Willie exits left. Let I think it's sweet of you. Bring your daddy along. Miss Forsyth. Oh, is is he isn't he isn't really your father? Biff, if that's turning with Forsyth, you have just seen a prince walk by, a fine, troubled prince, a hard-working, unappreciative prince. A pal, you understand? A good companion. Always for his boys. Letta, that's so sweet. Happy. Well, girls, what's the program? We're wasting time. Come on, Biff, gather around. W wouldn't would you like to go? Biff, why don't you do something for him? Happy, me. You don't give a damn about him, Hap. Hap. E. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm the one who, Biff, I sense it. You don't give a goddamn, good goddamn about him. He takes his rolled up hose from his pocket and puts it on the table for him, Happy. Look what I found in the cellar, for Christ's sake. How can I, how can you bear to let it go on? Happy, me, who goes away? Who runs off and Biff, yeah, but he doesn't come, he doesn't mean anything to you. You could help him, I can't. Don't you understand what I'm talking about? He's going to kill himself, don't you know that? Happy, uh, don't I know it? Me, Biff, Hap, help him, Jesus, help him. Help me, help him. I can't bear to look at his face, ready to weep. He hurries up out. Happy, startling after him. What are you talking about? Miss Forsyth, what's he so mad about? Happy, come on, girls, we'll catch up with him. Miss Forsyth, this happy pushes her out. Say, I don't like the temper of this. Happy, he's just a little overstrung. He'll be all right. Willie, off left as the woman laughs. Don't answer, don't answer. Letta, well, don't you want to tell your father? No, he's not my father. He's just a guy. C come on. Well, we'll catch Biff and honey. We'll go paint this town. Stanley, where's the check? Hey, Stanley, they exit. Stanley looks toward left. Stanley, calling to Happy indignantly. Mr. Loman, Mrs. Mr. Loman. Stanley picks up the chair and follows them, knocking as a hard left. The woman enters laughing. Willie follows her. She is in a black slip, his button, his shirt. Sensuous music accomplishes her their speech. Willie, will you stop laughing? Will you stop? The woman, aren't you going to answer the door? We'll wake up the whole hotel. Willie, I'm not expecting anybody. The woman, why aren't you come for another drink, honey, and, and settle down? Willie, I'm so lonely. The woman, you know you ruined me, Willie. From now on, when we come to the office, I see you go right through the buyers. Not waiting at my desk anymore, Willie, you ruined me. Willie, that's nice of you to say that. Willie, gee, you are self-centered. Why are you so mad? You are the saddest uh, self-centered soul I'd ever seen. I'd ever see saw. She laughs. He kisses her. Come on. 
inside drummer boy it's silly to be out Willie, there's knocking on the front door, women, but I felt a not I felt the knocking. You're just talking in there. Maybe the hotel is on fire. Willie is terrorizing. It's a mistake. The woman, then tell him to go away. Willie, there's nobody there. The woman, it's getting on my nerves. Willie, there's somebody standing out there and it's getting on my nerves. Willie pushing it away. All right, all right. In the bathroom here, he doesn't watch out. I think there's a law in Massachusetts about it, so don't come out. And maybe that new room clerk. He looks very mean. So don't come out. It's a mistake. There's no fire. Excuse me. Ugh. Biff, why don't you answer? Biff, what are you doing in Boston? <clears throat> Biff, why don't you answer there? I've been knocking for five minutes. I called in the phone. Willie, I just heard you. I was in the bathroom and I had the door shut. Did anything happen? Biff, Dad, I let you. What do you mean, Dad? Willie, Biffo, what's this about? Putting his arm around Biff. Come down. Let's go downstairs and get you a malted. Biff, Dad, I flunked math. Willie, not for the term? Not the term. I haven't got enough credits to graduate. What do you mean to say Bernard wouldn't give you the answers? He did, he tried, but uh, I only got a 61, and they wouldn't give you four points. Birnbaum refused. Absolutely. I begged him, Pop, but he won't give me those points. I, you gotta talk to him before they close the school. <coughs> kind of man you are, and I'd talk to you away. I'm sure you'd come through for me. The class came right before practice, see? And I didn't go enough. Would you talk to him? He like you, Pop. You know, the way you could talk. You're on. We'll drive right back. Oh, God, Dad. I'm sure he'll change it for you. Willie, go downstairs and tell the clerk I'm checking out. Go right down. Biff, yes, sir. See, the reason he hates me, Pop, is one day he was late for class, and I got up on the blackboard and imitated him, and I crossed my eyes, and I talked with a lisp. Willie, laughing. You did? The kids like it? Biff, well, they nearly died laughing. Willie, yeah? What did what'd you do? Well, the, the square road of Thick V Twee is... Uh, Willie bursts out laughing. Biff joins him. In the middle of uh, in it, he walks in. Willie laughs and the, and the woman on, it joins in offstage. Willie, without hesitation, hurry downstairs and... Is somebody there? Willie, no. Uh, that was next door. The woman laughs offstage. Biff, you get somebody in your bathroom. No, it's the next room. There's a party. The woman enters laughing. She lisps this. Can I come in? There's something in the bathtub, Willie, and it's moving. Willie looks at Biff, who is staring open mouthed and horrified at the woman. Well, yeah, you better get back to your house. There must be finished painting by now. They're painting a room, so I let her take a shower there. Go back, go back. He pushes her, the woman resisting, but I've got to get dressed, Willie. I can't. Willie, get out of here. Go back, go back. Suddenly striving for the ordinary. This is Miss Frances Biff. She's a lawyer. They're painting a room. Go back, Miss Frances. Go back. The woman, but my clothes. I can't go out all naked on in the hall. Willie pushing her off stage. Get out of here. Go back. Go back. Biff slowly sits down in his suitcase as the argument continues off stage. The woman, where's my stockings? You promised me stockings, Willie. Willie, I have no stockings yet. The woman, you had two boxes of size nine shears for me, and I want them. Willie. Here, for God's sakes. Will you get out of here? The woman enters uh, holding a box of stockings. I just hope there is nobody in the hall. That's all I hope to Biff. Are you football or baseball? Biff, football. Christ. Uh, the woman angrily humiliated. That's me too. Good night. She sma she sma she snatches. Ugh. She snatches her clothes from Willie and walks out. Willie, after a pause, well, better get going. I want my suits out of the closet. I'll get my valise. Biff doesn't move. What's the matter? She's a buyer. Buyer for J.H. Shimmons. She lives down the hall and they're painting. You don't imagine he breaks off after a pause. Now listen, pal. She's just a buyer. She sees merchandise in her room and they have to keep looking just so. Pause. Uh, assuming comment. All right. I'll get my suits. Biff doesn't move. Now stop crying and do as I say and I'll give you an order. Biff. I gave you an order. Is that what you do when I give you an order? How dare you cry, putting his arm around Biff. Now look, Biff, when you grow up, you mu you understand that these things, you mustn't uh, overemphasize a thing like this. I'll see Birnbaum first thing in the morning. Biff, never mind. Willie, getting down beside Biff, never mind. He's going to give you those points. I'll see it to you. 
if he wouldn't listen to you? Will he? Uncertain he will listen to me. You need those points for the U of Virginia. Biff, I'm not going there. Really, huh? If I can't get him to change that mark, you'll make it up in summer school. You got all summer to Biff's his weeping breaking from him. Dad. Willie, injected by it. Oh, boy. Biff, Dad. Uh, Willie, there's nothing to me. I, Biff, I was lonely. I was terribly lonely. Biff, you, you gave her mama stockings. Willie grabbed her, Biff. I gave him an order. Biff, don't touch me, you liar. Willie, apologize for that. Biff, you fake, you phony little fake, you fake. Overcome, he turned them quickly, sweeping his suitcase. Willie is left. Willie, I gave you an order, Biff. Come back here and I'll beat you. Uh, come back here, I'll whip you. Stanley comes uh, from the right and stands in front of him. Willie shouts at Stanley. I gave you an order. Stanley, let's pick it up. Pick it up, Mr. Loman. He helps Willie to his feet. You boys help with the chippies. They said they'll see you home. A second waiter comes and distance him but we were supposed to have dinner together. Music has heard Willie's theme. Stanley, can you make it? Willie, uh, I'll sure, sure. Uh, let's make it. Suddenly concerned about his clothes. Do I look all right? Stanley, uh, sure you do all right. He flicks his speck off Willie's lapel. lapel. Willie, here's here's a dollar. Uh, Stanley, oh, you and your son paid me. It's, it's quite all right. Willie, putting it on Stanley's hand. No, take it. You're a good boy. Stanley, oh no, you don't have to. Willie, here's a pause. Some more. I don't need it anymore. Willie, after a slight pause, tell me, is there a seed store in the neighborhood? Stanley, Steve, you mean like to plants? As Willie turns, Stanley slips the money back into his jacket pocket. Willie, yes, carrots, peas. Stanley, well, there's hardware stores on 6th Avenue, but it may be too late now. Willie anxiously, oh, I'd better hurry. I got to get some seeds. He starts off to the right. I've got to get some seeds right away. Nothing's planted. I don't have a thing in the ground. Willie hurries out to the light and the light goes down. Stanley moves over to the light after him and watches him off. The other waiter has been staring at Willie. Stanley, to the waiter. Well, what you looking at? Uh. Hey, Happy, what are you doing? Linda says nothing but moves toward him impeccably. Where's Pop? He keeps backing to the right and now Linda is in full view of the doorway in the living room. Is he sleeping? Linda, where were you? Happy, he's trying to laugh it off. Well, we just met two girls, Mom. Very fine types. They, uh, they brought you some flowers. Offering them to her. She uh, put it in her room. Ma, she knocks inside of the floor. He has now come inside and looks toward She stares at Biff, silent, happy. Now what do you do that for, Mom? I want you to have some flowers. Linda, cutting happy off violently to Biff. Don't you care whether he lives or dies? Happy, go into the stairs. Come upstairs, Biff. Biff with a flare of disgust, happy. Go away from me. To Linda, what do you mean? Lives or dies? Nobody's dying around here, pal. Linda, get out of my sight. Get out of here, Biff. I want to see the boss. Linda, you're not going near him. Biff, where is he? He moves to the living room and Linda follows. Linda, shouting after Biff. You invite him for dinner. He looks forward to it all day. Biff appears in his parents' bedroom, looks around and exits. And then you desert him there? There is no stranger you do that to. Happy, why? He had a swell time with us. Listen, when Linda comes back in the kitchen, desert him. I hope I don't outlive that day. I'm gonna get out here. Happy, now look, Mom. Linda, did you get to the room tonight? You and your lousy, rotten whores. Biff re-enters the kitchen. Happy, Mom, all we did was follow Biff around trying to cheer him up. To Biff, boy, what a night you gave me. Linda, get out of here, both of you. And don't come back. But I don't want you tormenting him anymore. Go on now. Get your things together. To Biff. You can sleep in his apartment. She starts to pick up the flowers and stops herself. Pick up this stuff. I'm not your maid anymore. Pick it up, you bum, you. Happy turns his back to her in refusal. Biff slowly moves over and gets down on his knees, picking up the flowers. Linda, you're a pair of animals. Not one, not another living soul would have the cruelty to walk out on a man in a restaurant. Biff, not looking at her. Is that what he said? Linda, he didn't have to say anything. He was so humiliated, he nearly limped when he came in. Happy, but Mom, he had a great time with us. Biff, cutting him off violently. Shut up. Without another word, Happy goes upstairs. Linda, you, you didn't even have to go in to see if he was all right. Biff, sitting on the floor in front of Linda, the flowers in his hand with self-loathing. No, didn't, didn't do a damn thing. How do you like that, huh? Left him paddling in a toilet. Linda, you louse, you. Lynn, Biff, now you hit the, you hit it on the nose. He gets up, throws the flowers in the wastebasket. The scum of the earth, and you're looking at him. Linda, get out of here. Biff, I gotta talk to the mom boss. Where is he? Linda, you're not going near him. Get out of this house. Biff, with an absolute assurance determination. No, we're going to have an abrupt conversation, me and him. Linda, you're not talking to him. 
Hammering is heard from the outside of the house, off right. Biff turns toward the noise. Linda suddenly pleading, Will you please, please leave him alone? Biff, what's he doing out there? Linda, he's planting the garden. Biff quietly, now? Oh my god. Biff moves aside, the light dies down on them, picks up at the center, walks into it. He's carrying a flashlight, a hoe, a handful of sea packets, and wraps up the rope. Um, he's in the blue of night. Willie. Carrots, quarter-inch ones, rows, and one-foot rows. He measures of it one foot. He puts on a package and measures it off. Beets, he puts on another package and then measures it again. Lettuce, he reads the package, puts it down one foot. He breaks off as Ben appears to the right and moves slowly to him. What a proposition. Terrific, terrific, because he has suffered, Ben. The woman has suffered. You can't understand me. A man has to go out of the way he came in. Ben has to go out and up to something. You can't, you can't. Just Ben moves towards him as though to interrupt. You gotta consider now. You don't answer so quick remember it's a guaranteed twenty thousand dollar proposition now look ben i want you to go the ins and outs of this thing with me i've got to talk to you ben and the woman has suffered you hear me ben standing still considering what was the proposition willie it's twenty thousand dollars on the barrel head guaranteed it's guilt edged you understand ben you want me to make a fool of yourself they might not honor the policy how can they dare refuse? Didn't I work like a coolie to meet every premium on the nose and now they won't pay me off? Impossible. Then it's cowardly thing, William. William, why? Does it take more guts to stand here than the rest of my life than ringing up a zero? Then yielding. That's the point, William. He moves thinking turns and 20,000, that's something no one can feel the hand. There it is. Willie, now assured with the rising power. Oh, Ben, that's the whole beauty of it. It's like a diamond shining in the heart. Rough, I can pick it up and touch with my hand. Not like anything that's an appointment. That would be no other damn fool appointment. Ben, and it changes the aspects. Because he thinks I'm nothing to see, and so he spites me at the funeral. Strange up. Ben, that funeral will be massive. They'll come from Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, all the old timers. With a strange license plate, so that boy will be thunderstruck, Ben, because he never realized I am known. Rhode Island, New York, New Jersey, I am known, Ben. And he'll see it in his eyes for once and all. And he'll see what I have been, and he's in for a shock, that boy. Ben, coming down to the edge of his garden, he'll call you a coward. Will he, uh, will he suddenly fearful? No, that would be terrible. Ben, yes, and a damned fool. Ben, he'll hate you, William. The gay music of the boys is heard. Will he, oh, Ben... Well, why do we get back to the great times? Just to be so full of light and camaraderie and the sleigh riding in the winter, all the ruddiness of his cheeks. And some kind of good news coming up, always something nice coming up ahead. And never let me carry his valise in the house. And Simon, Simonizing that car, little red car. Why can't I give him something and not have him hate me? Then, let me think about it. He glances at his watch. I sure have a little time. Remarkable proposition, but you got sure you're not making a fool of yourself. Ben drifts off stage and goes off sight. If he comes down from the left, Willie suddenly conscious of Ben turns him and looks at him, and begins picking up the package of the seeds in compulsion. Where the hell is that seed? The ingredients? You can't see nothing out of here. That box in the whole goddamn neighborhood. Biff, there are people around here who don't you realize that? Biff, I'm busy. Don't bother me. Biff, taking the hoe from Willie. I'm saying goodbye to you, Pop. Willie looks at him, uh, unable to move. I am not coming back anymore. Willie, you're not going to see Oliver tomorrow. Biff, I got no appointment, Dad. Willie, he put his arm around you and you've got an appointment. Biff, Pop, get this now, will you? Every time I've left, it's been a fight and something that uh, left me out of there. I, today, I realized something about myself and I realized I tried to explain it to you and I, I, I think I'm just not smart enough to make any sense of it out for you. To hell with those whose fault it is for coming up with anything like that. He takes Willie's arm. Let's just wrap it up, huh? Come in and we'll talk and we'll tell Mom. He gently tries to pull Willie to the left. Willie, frozen, immobile, with guilt to his voice. No, I, I don't want to see her. Biff. Come on. He pulls again, and Willie tries to pull away. Willie, highly nervous. No, no, no. I don't want to see her. Biff uh, tries to look into Willie's face to find the answer there. No, why don't you want to see her? Willie, more harshly, don't bother me, will you? Biff, what do you mean you don't want to see her? You don't want to call them yellow, you now, do you? This isn't your fault. It's me. I'm a bum. Now you come inside, Willie. Willie strains to get away. Did you hear what I said? Willie pulls away and quickly goes to himself in the house. Biff to follow. Linda to Willie. Did you plant, dear? Biff at the door to Linda. All right, we, we had it. I'm, I'm, I'm going on. I'm, I'm not writing anymore. Linda, go into the willies of the kitchen. I think it's the best way, dear. I think there's no use drawing it out. You'll just never get along. Willie doesn't understand. Biff, people ask me where I am and what I'm doing, and you know, you don't seem to care. The, the way it'll be off your mind, and you can't start brightening up again. All right, that clears it, doesn't it? Willie is silent, and Biff goes to him. You're going to wish me luck, Scout. 
He extends his hand. What do you say? Linda shakes his hand. Willie. Linda turning to her, seething with hurt. There's no necessity to mention the pen at all, you know. Biff, gently. I've got no appointment, Dad. Willie, erupting fiercely. He put his arm around. Biff, Dad, you're never going to see what I am, so what's the use of arguing? If I strike oil, I'll send you a check. Meantime, forget I'm alive. Willie to Linda. Spite, see? Biff, shakes hands. Dad? Not my hand. Biff, I was hoping not to go this way. Well, it's time that you, the way you're going. Goodbye. Biff looks at him for a moment and then turns sharply and goes to the stairs. Willie stops him with, May you rot in hell if you leave this house. Biff turning, Exactly what is it that you want from me? Willie, I want you to know on the train, in the mountains, in the valleys, wherever you go, that you cut down your life for spite. Biff, no, no. Willie, spite, spite this world is undoing. And when you're going down now, remember what you did it. Remember you're riding somewhere beside the railroad tracks. Remember that you don't dare blame it on me. Biff, I'm not blaming it on you, Willie. I don't take this the rap for you, you hear. Happy comes down the stairs and on the bottom step watching. Biff, that's just what I'm telling you. Willie's thinking into the chair at the table with full accusation. You're trying to put a knife in me. Don't think I don't know what you're doing. Biff, all right, phony. Then let's lay it on then. He whips the rubber tube out of his pocket and puts it on the table. Happy, you crazy. Linda, Biff! She moves to grab the hose, but Biff holds it down with his hand. Leave it there. Don't move it. Willie, looking at it. What is that? Biff, you know goddamn well what it is. Willie, caged, unwanting to escape. I never saw that. Biff, you saw it. The mice didn't bring it onto the cellar. What do you want to do, make a hero out of you? This is supposed to make me sorry for you? Willie, never heard of it. Biff, there'll be no pity for you, you hear? No pity. Willie to Linda, you hear the spite? Biff, no, you're not going to hear the truth. What are you, and what am I? Linda, stop it. Willie, spite. Happy, coming down towards Biff. You cut it now. Biff to Happy. The man who did don't know where we are. The man is going to know to Willie. We never told the truth for ten minutes in this house. Happy, we've always told the truth. Biff turning to him, you big blower, you the assistant buyer, you... One of the two assistants, aren't you? Happy. Well, I'm practically... Biff, you're practically full of it. We all are. I'm through with it to Willie. Now hear this, Willie. This is me. Willie, I know you. Biff, you know I had no address for three months. I sold a suitcase in Kansas City and I was in jail. To Linda, who was sobbing. Stop crying. I'm through with it. Linda turns away from them, her hands covering her face. Willie, that's, that's, I suppose that's my fault. Biff, why well, I stole myself out of every good job since high school. Willie, and whose fault is that? Biff, and I never got anywhere because you blew me so full of hot air I can never stand taking orders from anybody. That's whose fault it is. Willie, yeah, I hear that. Linda, don't, Biff. Biff, it's goddamn time you heard I had to be big boss shot in two weeks, and I'm through with it. Willie, then you hang yourself. For spite, hang yourself. No, nobody's hanging himself, Willie. I ran down 11 flights with a pen in my hand today, and I suddenly stopped. You hear me? In the middle of the office building. Do you hear this? I stopped in the middle of that building, and I saw the sky. I saw the buildings, and I saw the world. I had, some, I had to sit and smoke. And I looked at the pen, and I said to myself, what the hell am I doing grabbing this for? Why am I trying to become something I don't want to be? Why am I, uh, what am I doing in this office making a, a contemptuous begging fool of myself? When all I want I, out there waiting for me, and the minute I say I know who I am, why can't I say that, Willie? He tries to make Willie face him, but Willie pulls away most of the left. Willie, with hatred threateningly, the door of your life is wide open. Biff, pop, I'm a dime a dozen, and so are you. Willie, turning him onto his... And turning it now into an uncontrollable outburst. I am not a dime a dozen. I am Willie Loman, and you are Biff Loman. Biff starts for Willie, but is blocked to be happy. In his fury, Biff seems to be on the verge of attacking his father. Biff, I am not a leader of men, Willie. Neither are you. You never landed anything in a hard-working drummer who landed in the ash and can all like the rest of them. I am one dollar an hour, Willie. I tried seven states and couldn't raise it. A buck an hour. You try gathering my meaning. I'm not bringing home any prizes for you anymore. You're going to stop waiting for me to bring them home. Willie, directly to Biff, you vengeful, spiteful mutt. Biff grabs from Happy. Willie, in fright, starts up the stairs. Biff grabs him. Biff, at the peak of his fury. Pop, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, Pop. Can't you understand that there's no spite in anything anymore? I just am what I am, that's all. Biff's fury has sent, spent itself, and he breaks down, sobbing, holding on to Willie, whose tumbly falls over Biff's face. Willie, astonished. What are you doing? What are you doing? To Linda. Why is he crying? Uh, Biff. Uh, crying, broken. Will you let me go, for Christ's sake? Will you take that phony dream and burn it if something happens? Uh, struggling to contain himself, he pulls himself away and moves to the stairs. I'll go in the morning. Puts him away, puts the bed, exhausted. Uh, Biff moves up the stairs towards the room. Willie, after a long pause, astonished and elevated, isn't that something remarkable? Biff, 
He likes me. Linda, he loves you, Willie. Happily. Deeply moved. Always did, Bob. Willie, oh, Biff. Staring wildly, he cried, cried to me. He is choking me with his love and now cries a promise. That boy, that boy is going to be magnificent. Ben appears outside the kitchen. Ben, yes, outstanding with 20,000 behind him. Linda sensed the racing of his mind, fiercely racing. Willie, it's all settled now. Willie, finding it difficult not to rush out of the house. Yes, we'll sleep. Come on, go to sleep, Hap. And Ben does to grand crack up the jungle. In accents of dread, Ben's idyllic music starts up. Happy around his window. I'm getting married, Pop. Uh, don't forget it. I'm changing everything. I'm going to run that department uh, before the year is up. You'll see. He just kisses her. Ben. Uh, the jungle is dark, but full of diamonds, Willie. Willie turns, moves, listening to Ben. Linda, be good. You're both good boys. Just act that way. That's all. Night, Pop. He goes upstairs. Linda to Willie. Come on, dear. Ben with greater force. Uh, one must go in and fetch a diamond out. Willie goes to Linda and he moves along the edge of the kitchen towards the door. I just want to get settled down. That's all. Let me settle down for a little. Linda, almost uttering your fear. I want you upstairs. Willie taking her in her arms. In a few minutes, Linda, I couldn't sleep right now. Go on. You look awfully tired. He kisses her. Ben, not an appointment at all. A diamond in a rough is hard to the touch. Uh, Willie, go on now. I'll be right up. Linda, I sure think it's the only way. Willie, Willie, sure thing. It's the best. Ben, best thing. Willie, the only way everything is going to be. Go on, kid. Uh, get to bed. You look so tired. Linda, come on up. Willie, two minutes. Linda goes into the living room. Uh, and then reappears in her bedroom. Willie moves outside, just, uh, th the kitchen door. Willie loves me. Uh, wondering, isn't that a remarkable thing, Ben? He'll worship me for it. Ben, with promise, it's dark there, but full of diamonds. Willie, can you imagine the magnificence of 20,000 sand dollars in his pocket? Linda calling him from the, her room. Willie, come up. Willie calling into the kitchen. Yes, yes, coming. Uh, it's very smart. You realize that, don't you, sweetheart? Even Ben sees it. I gotta go, baby. Bye, bye. He calls over to Ben, almost dancing. Imagine when the mail comes, we'll be ahead of Bernard again. Uh, ben, a uh, perfect proposition all around. Willie, did you see how he cried to me? Oh, if I could kiss him. Ben, Ben, time, William, time. Ben, oh, Ben, I always knew it was one way or another we were gonna make it, Biff and I. Uh, ben, looking at his watch. The boat will be late. He moves slowly off into the darkness. Willie, uh, elegantly. Turns to the house. Now when you kick off, boy, I want a 70-yard boot and a r get right down to the field under the ball. And when you hit it, hit low and hard because it's the important thing. He swings around the phases of evidence and there's all uh, things to say in the stands. And the first thing you know, suddenly realizing alone, Ben, Ben, what do I do? He makes a sudden move, move in a search. How do I? Linda calling. Willie, you coming up? Willie, huttering a gasp of fear, whirling around to say it was quiet. Hirsch, he turned around as if to say, sounds faces. Sounds faces stops him. It rises in incessantly. And it's an unbearable scream. He goes up and down on his toes, rushes all around the house. Shh, shh. Linda, Willie? There is no answer. Linda waits. Biff gets up to off his bed. He is still in his clothes. Happy sits up. Biff stands, uh, listening. Linda? No. Biff, rushing down the streets. Pop! As the car speeds off, the music crashes down with a frenzy of sound, which becomes a soft pulsation of a single cello string. Biff slowly returns to his bedroom. He and Happily, uh, gravelly don their jackets. Linda slowly walks out of her room. The music has developed into a dead march. The leaves of day are appearing over everything. Charlie and Bernard, somberly dressed, appear and knock on the kitchen door. Be, uh, Biff and Happy slowly descend to the stairs in the kitchen as Charlie and Bernard enter. All stop a moment when Linda, in close of morning, bearing a little bunch of roses, comes straight to the doorway. She goes to Charlie and takes his arm. Now all move towards the kitchen in the audience. Through the wall line of the kitchen, at, at the limit of the apron, Linda lays down the flowers kneels and sits back on her heels all stare down at the grave now begins the requiem section Charlie it's getting dark Linda Linda doesn't react she stares at the grave Biff how about it mom better get some rest huh they'll be closing the gate soon Linda makes no power move pause happy deeply angered uh, he had no right to do that. There was no necessity for that. We could have helped him. Charlie grunting. Hmm. 
Biff, come along, Mom. Linda, why didn't anybody come? Charlie, it was a very nice funeral. Linda, but there, there was all these people he knew. Maybe they didn't blame him. Uh, nah, it's a rough world, Linda. They, they couldn't blame him. Linda, I understand at this time, especially, first only 35 years, uh, what about free and clear? He was only a little sad, really. He was finished with the dentist. Charlie, no man only needs a little salary. Linda, I can't understand it. Biff, there were a lot of nice days when he'd come home from a tip, trip or Sundays making the stoop, finishing the cellar, putting on the new porch. When he built something extra in the bathroom, he'd put up the garage. You know something, Charlie, was, there's more of him in that front stoop than all of the sales he ever made. Charlie, yeah, he was a happy man with a batch of cement. Linda, he was so wonderful with his hands. He had, a, he had the wrong dreams, all wrong. Happy, almost ready to fight. Biff, don't say that. Biff, he never knew who he was. Charlie, stopping Happy's movement in reply to Biff. Nobody, Tass, blame this man. Don't you understand? Willie was a salesman, and for a salesman, there was no rock bottom uh, to the life. He don't put the bolt to a nut, or he don't tell you the law, or give you medicine. He's a man way out there in the blue, riding on the back of a smile of a shoeshine. And when they start not smiling back, that's an earthquake. And you get yourself a couple of spots in your hat, and you're finished. Nobody dast blame this man. A salesman has got to dream. Boy, it comes with the territory. Biff. Charlie, this man didn't know who he was. Happy infuriated. Don't say that. Biff, why don't you come with me, Happy? Happy, I'm not licked that easily. I I'm staying right in this city, and I'm going to beat this racket. He looks at Biff. Chin set. The Loman Brothers. <laughs> Biff, I know who I am, kid. Happy. All right, boy. I'm going to show you and everybody else that Willie Loman did not die in vain. He had a good dream. It's the only dream that you can have to come number one man. He fought it out there, and this is where I'm going to win it with for him. Biff, with a hopeless glance at Happy, bends toward him. Mother, let's go. Linda, I'll be with you just a minute. Go on, Charlie. He hesitates. I want you, just for a minute. I never had a chance to say goodbye. Uh, Charlie moves away, followed by Happy. Biff remains uh, a slight distance up Linda. She sits there, summoning herself. The flute begins, not far away. Playing her behind her speech. Linda, forgive me, dear. I can't cry. I don't know what it is, but I can't cry. I don't understand it. Why don't you? Why did you ever do that? Help me, Willie. I can't cry. It seems that you're just on another trip. I, I didn't. I, didn't, I keep expecting you, Willie. I, I can't cry. Why did you do it? I search and search. I search. I, I can't understand it, Willie. I made the last payment on the house today. Today, dear. And there'll be nobody home. A sob rises from her throat. We're free and clear. Sobbing fully released. <laughs> We're free. Bill comes slowly toward her. We're free. We're free. Biff lifts her to her feet and moves up right there, lifting arms. Linda sobs quietly. Bernard and Charlie come to her, gather her around, and follow them. Followed by Happy. Only the music of the flute is left on the darkening stage as over the house of the hard towers of the apartment building rise into sharp focus and the curtain falls. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's reading of Death of a Salesman. Thank you.